Oh, I got a lot of a lot of audio happening at the same time. Jeez. Okay, three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream. It is the B&A stream today on this fine 29th of May, 1999. That's the year, 1999. It's not 2023. It's 1999. I hope you are having a wonderful week, and will have a wonderful week ahead of you. Uh, I am currently hearing myself a lot, so that's, let's get that out of my ears. Um, but yeah, no, this week has been, uh, recovery from the chaos of last week. Uh, greetings, Blob, how's it going? You caught me right at the beginning. Uh, so how about let's just jump right into the game, because I've got a lot to get to. So, um, holiday in Germany. Ooh, nice, happy holiday, my man. All right, here we go. I got the ding in the end. Um, so you can actually watch. Nice. Good on you. Uh, well, okay, last week, you'll see where I am, and then you'll be like, oh, you ended there? See, now, you'll see three three badges here. Uh, yeah, last week's stream uh, was pretty, mm, how would I say, below average luck. Um, I realized I have a huge problem on my hands. And that's Ninjask currently has a huge reliance on pulling off Swords Dance, Double Team, and then a move with 80% accuracy, which may hit two to five times. I got the short end of that stick multiple times last stream, um, and that's not really good fun. We didn't really get, you know, much of the goods, basically. So after clearing off that guy, everyone's disappeared. Um, other than that, I did the whole trek. Rushy has an oh, he got an item before I even... I swear I took the item off him. <laughs> Rare candy, you know, uh, I will very accept that. So, very good memes. Uh, if you didn't catch the VOD, I edited in an explanation in the VOD. I was like, at, are my odds really that bad? Because I was having a huge struggle at the end of the last stream. I was like, no way are my odds that bad. And it turns out, um... Yeah, no, they weren't actually that bad. Uh, in places. There were some other things that I, I was, you know, I was thinking I was in bad luck, but then I was like, actually, when you measure it, um, I think pretty much the, uh, the moral of what I felt was, uh, supersonic from my opponent hit six out of seven times. Uh, I seem to consistently keep missing after being sand attacked once. I hit two out of ten times, uh, with fury swipes after getting sand attacked. Um, once. Which is not very good. Uh, and also, almost all, well, almost half the attempts with Fury Swipes, uh, had two hits instead of the expected three and a half, somewhere between three and four. Um, so I was very short on luck out of that one. Um, but I also feel like, you know what? I shouldn't really be relying on luck. There, w there really should be something I should do. Also, I caught a Slugma. Yes. In two hours, 40 minutes. <laughs> that took that took a fair bit of time. Granted, there was a lot of road to cover to get there. Uh, I caught a Slugma, and the Slugma... Eh, he's taking his sweet time getting, you know, the goods, basically. Uh, but he'll, he'll have his time to shine. Uh, the town on the left of the town with the third badge. I did, yes. I went there on the stream that I did the third gym. Yes. I didn't do the contest. I'm not doing... Yes. I went back through the mountain. You have to go... Um... Back to... Um... You have to go to the... The... the um... The Media Falls in the northwest in order to continue the story because otherwise Team Aqua are not on this mountain. You know who is on this mountain? Um... Oh, I thought there'd be trainers here. Oh well. Dude, the music tracks are great though. I thought there'd be trainers here, like the moment you come back up here. But I think maybe the trigger is, uh... I wonder where, where the trigger is. It's not like this map transition, is it? Nah, I'd expect trainers at this point. Alright, well, I should come back at some point. Uh, but this is the fun little route, the Jagged Pass. It actually has some of the soot grass as well, that you can keep contributing to it with that. Uh, but I love how the soot starts to disappear 
as you go down the mountain. Mount chimneys, jagged paths. This is what I've always wanted in a mountain. This jagged bumpiness, it rocks my soul. And yes, yes, there are still, uh... Yeah, the music's there. Uh, did I get the bag for the sort of Yeah, I did, yeah. I'm still sending out an autogram. I feel like I've been disgraced because Fury Swipes just doesn't hit as much as I wanted to. See what I mean? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you can't come here right away. It's being blocked off. You have to go the whole route all around before you can actually get in here. It's it's a very long track, and uh, amazingly, very long way between gyms. Uh, last stream I did not get to do any gyms. This stream we're doing two gyms pretty much right off the bat. Am I gonna get wrecked by a battle toy? Slugma is just. He's, He's not having a fun time. I just want to set him out and like get some, you know, get some experience on the board. And instead, he always seems to go last and always seems to get caught out by someone who either gets him with a strong attack or, a, you know, one of these somewhat luck-based attacks. Like, what's the odds you get side beamed and then hit yourself in confusion on the same turn? Someone do the odds. It's probably like fifteen percent. The other thing I found out, or I. Not found out, but the other thing I realized that I was obviously super caught out on is the fact that that uh, Marsh Tom, being the Camel Fire Pokemon, is much better. Well, not necessarily. Yeah, I wanted to to toss it up though and go with Mag Cargo. Um, but I know what you mean. It's a uh, Torkoal. It's a uh, Cam. Is he a Camel? Maybe. I think. There's no sword here, and yes, there is a trainer over there. You can only fight one of them, along with this person. Uh, fire ground is, yeah. I like I'm taking a huge gamble on this one. Um, also, I did not have my notes out, so I shall pull my notes out. There we go. Picnic of Diana. But yeah, I need to like total. I need to totally. Oh my goodness! There's not many trainers on the way down. Uh, fun fact to the other viewers. It's one of the places with the other bike. Oh yeah, because you can jump up the steps with the uh, with the acro bike. I'm having a fun time here. Yeah, I don't see what he's gonna accomplish with the Mega Drain, but who knows? <laughs> okay. I'm gonna be caught out by luck constantly. Well, yeah, the one thing I want to super rely on is we gotta get Slash on Ninjask, and get rid of, get rid of that darn move. And Slash is fortunately a level 31 move, so I'm not going to be relying on Fury Swipes for too much longer, but I've still, yeah, I, I was under the impression that 3rd gen would at least be able to get away from like having crappy moves for so long, but then it's like, yeah, Marsh Tomp ain't having the best of luck. He ain't really having the best run. At least with his moveset. Um, I'm just not feeling it. But, you know what? We'll get there. We'll get there. Oh my gosh, I love Sunspore. Uh, I think for Marsh Tom, the problem is that he learns uh, one of his best moves. How does he learn that move? Maybe he'll learn it when he evolves. Interesting. Um, he'll learn a couple of moves, but... Yeah, it's gonna take a little bit of time to get there. That being said, look, mmm, man, you know, it's, I really wish he dealt a lot more damage to the Slugma. Oh well. It's gonna get there. It's gonna get there. Oh, oh, why are you faster all of a sudden? Oh, I apparently lost the internet. I lost my internet. I lost my internet. Yeah, okay, I see reconnecting, you were disconnected from the server. That is good fun. I lost my internet. Right away. Man, that's gonna get kind of annoying, isn't it? Having the chat just constantly appearing and not appearing. Because I'm constantly getting told, welcome to the chat room. I'm apparently... Oh, jeez. Okay, well, anyway, I'll continue the stream. Hi there, VOD people, how are you doing? <laughs> so, okay. This is why I do a VOD, because uh, apparently inconsistent internet is always a struggle. Uh, so Swablu here, I'll oh, just head one of the tackle. 
It's probably confusing Blub, isn't it? I'm sorry, Blub. I'm sorry, my internet is trash, apparently. Oh, okay, I'm back in. I'm back in to the fray. I didn't do anything. I didn't say anything. I've been having some really mixed internet today. NBN code, fix your stuff. Um, I actually, I remember on one stream I, like, said, thanks, Telstra. Um, I think it was the Toy Story 2 stream, like, pff, nearly two years ago at this point. Um, man, it's been a while since I played that game. Look at that, Route 112, and uh, this guy's pacing back and forth. I'm pretty sure he's the trainer. Look at that, there's a little town here called Loveridge Town. Wow! Let's go heal. Uh, but yeah, oh yeah, I remember back in the, the Toy Story 2 stream, my internet died uh, when I tried doing the, um, the bonus stream. So I ended up just um, streaming off my phone, which was kind of interesting. We draw as much hot water as we need, and yet the hot springs never run dry. Isn't it magical? These hot springs appear near active volcanoes. Uh, uh, mm. Veins of water under the ground are heated by magma to well up as hot springs. They are claiming that these hot springs are good for calming nervous tension, relieving aching muscles, solving romantic problems, and attracting money. If people put Pokemon on hot springs, it might be seriously strange. Well, it might be an electric bath, or a bubble bath, or even a lava bath. Oh my gosh. This is a cool hot spring. It's just funny. You can exit the Pokemon Center and go into it. Um, but yeah, I've been having some real mixed stuff where it's like I've been having real low just download. Latency is fine, and I've not been having trouble getting to pages, but... Uh, oh, this person gives you a, a Pokemon. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've completely forgotten about this one. Uh, will I... No, I'm, I'm not going to carry it, I feel, because I'm thinking, huh, you know what, like, there is a Pokemon I need to catch, because I didn't cover the Pokemon that were available on that last round. So, in particular, actually, if I, if I talk about it, it'll give it away. So, how about, let's go back to the pie. I am so disorganized this stream. Okay, so first of all, that egg contains a Pokemon called Wynort, which evolves into the se uh, second gen Pokemon, Wobbuffet. They liked doing a couple of third gen pre-evolutions in this game, which I thought was kind of interesting. Uh, let's see if I can get more Pokeballs. Although, did I lose all my money from losing once? I lost a bunch of money. Apparently, you don't sell Pokeballs anymore. You just sell Great Balls. Well, we've got how many Premier Balls to keep the streak up? I'm just thinking about it. This might be the last Pokemon I can actually get with Premier Ball as well. Oh, that guy's not a trainer. Okay. People are now going to be going, Oh my gosh, what are the other two Pokemon it's going to get? Well, back up the mountain we go. So, uh, yeah, so the Pokemon that you can get in that route, uh, 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 Numo, which we've already covered. Oh, it could be Numo as well, not Torkoal, sorry. Because he evolves, yeah, actually, sorry, yeah, not Torkoal, yeah, Numo, because he evolves into Camera Up, the Camel Pokemon. Um, Machop is also available on that route. And one last mystery, oh, look at that. All these people who should have been here all along. Well, stuff, stuff there. I'm not going to talk about the thing. We're going to fight some trainers that people never fight. Alright, you're up front. Since I bathe in the hot springs, I'd be feeling great. I'm sure I'm going to win. The trigger is getting into the town. Oh, you got a new mole? Dang it. I don't really know what I'm... What I'm expecting, but sure. Um, yeah, so... Today, uh, we've got a couple of a couple of news items, not too many, um, but I guess I've got one one general gaming topic eventually. But we'll, we'll first get into the tech stuff. So I think I talked about the 4060 Ti um, last week. I don't think my opinions have really changed on it, um, especially since reviewers have already been coming out with stuff, anyways. I've been to the hot springs and refreshed my tired bones. Right now, I'm feeling strong. Oh my goodness. Um, so, but I wanted to provide the counterpoint of, I think I mentioned the AMD RX 7600, the successor to the 6600, which uh, in my circles is a decently popular GPU. Like, it's in that kind of area of, it's, you know, the 6600 XT is supposed to be the uh, fairly good overall you know, all camp GPU. But I found the 6600 to be fairly covers a lot of bases. As in, it, seem, it seems to be a, a good overall card for a lot of people. 
a bit weaker in some places. Uh, the ray tracing is just no nowhere near it at all what you really want to do uh, to, to have in games, but it's in general for Rust Rise, it's actually pretty alright. And it keeps going for a very low price here in Australia, so I do appreciate that. The 7600 is their direct follow-up. Uh, this is an interesting GPU because uh, AMD's trying to go for a chiplet-based design for all their GPUs. Uh, this one is the one that is so stripped down as in it's one chiplet. So it's just one... It's, it's, oh, there's a fake out. Um, it's just one, you know, unit basically. And that's the reason why they're coming out with it now, uh, is that they're having some interesting uh, design... That's... Ooh. Flame body should be kicking in way more often than I feel like I'm setting myself up to. If you know what I mean? Like, it should be, you know, every me uh, physical attack inflicts flame body, but apparently uh, no one's hitting me with physical stuff, so. Oh boy, I'm getting hit with the arm thrust. What's the odds it hits five times? Don't say 12 and a half percent. I know that's the odds. We got four of them, so. It's better than what I can do. Um. Every time. Um, so, the 7600 has been launched in Australia for 469 Australian dollars. That is significantly higher than, I guess, the 329 dollars of the card it's supposedly succeeding, and somewhat the, I think about 430 that the RX 6700 has. A card that is, I think, in all tests, better. And it's got a little bit more VRAM, because I know some people know the VRAM thing. Um, and just like the 4060 Ti, it's like, well, it doesn't compete well against the last gen for its current price. And that's because the last gen dipped in price. Um, oh my gosh, this person was ready to go. I've got the fire in me, baby. I can't stand it. I have to battle. Oh my goodness. Oh, you got the marrow. I am not sending this boy out. Uh, let's go back to the monogram. We'll see how this goes. Oh, he's probably got rollout though. This might get dicey. We'll see how it goes. How many times is that's three times it's missed? Is that that seems like it's against the odds? I'm cursed. I tell ya, this fury swipes attack is just. I don't think it's eighty percent in this game. I think they programmed it wrong. <laughs> how do people actually find out that it's an eighty percent accuracy? Like, do they data mine for it? So, so yeah, so the 7600, just like the 4060 Ti, um, pretty much just like, yeah, not really worth it given its launch price. Wait for it to come down. Uh, interestingly, the 4060 Ti has now regularly been sitting at 600 Australian, down from its 729. It came out like four days ago. Uh, and I, I, I hinted at this and I've known, not known, but like it happened for the previous GPUs as well. Here in Australia, the price was immediately tanked because no one buys these cards at the launch prices. They're way too pricey. Especially in, you know, <laughs> socio-economic scenarios. Can I hit him with the Ember or is he gonna, like, pop me? I don't know if this is gonna pop me. Yeah, oh, well, it's crit. He knew, he knew it was gonna pop me. I just realized Brushy has another item. He's been getting items real quick, so uh, let's get him with the Fury Cutter because bug. Oh, he's got the head. That's interesting. Uh, but yeah, the one thing that the 7600 at least does have is it's more consistent. It seems to be a card that uh, is at least better overall in every use case compared to a 6600. Um, so that at least means that I I'm not going to have to um and err uh over. Mm, the GDDR6X version of the 3060 Ti is technically a better card depending on what you're doing, like when you ignore for price, um, which also ultimately ignores power, just mind you. But even then, the power saving isn't particularly amazing on the 4060 I don't know. These are not very impressive cards, but they're not the worst, maybe, so. Uh, anyway. Let's keep going. So, the one Pokemon that I failed to mention here, and let's just see, do I have him out? We'll take our sad uh, chances with this. Should I have saved? Maybe I should save. 
Uh, so here's a normal. Here's a normal. Uh, the odds are I have a 20% chance of finding the Pokemon I want, so it's not that hard. Um, but interestingly as well, I don't know why, the, um, the wild Pokemon encounters, uh, in Ruby, all of them are level 18 and 20, but in Sapphire, they're all 20 to 22, according to Bulbapedia. Which is why you notice that the Numal here is level 22. Why they're two levels higher in Sapphire? I don't know. Has Sapphire had higher level, higher experience Pokemon? Does that make Sapphire the harder game up to this point? There he is! Check it out, it's a Spoink! Spoink is, uh, hopefully, gonna be my, my lover. I gotta have lots of friends. He's psyched up, though. He's... I've had... Ooh, that's gonna be kind of weird, isn't it? Because he's he's gonna keep using it. He's gonna keep getting that speed boost. Ooh. That's gonna be terrifying. That's gonna be interesting. Um... Yeah, this is gonna be a real interesting, uh, wild Pokemon encounter. I don't think I can really take his health down anymore. We might have to take the stab with 11 Premier Balls. This is the last Premier Ball Pokemon, I guess. So. Listen, I say I'm unlucky, but I seem to be catching things real easily in this one. So Spoink is going to be uh, my member number four, which is going to be good. So Spoink keeps a pearl on the top of its head. The pearl functions to amplify this Pokemon's psychokinetic powers. It is therefore on a constant search for a bigger pearl. Uh, I would like to mention that I think it's the description of which game is it, where it's like the moment the like it stops bouncing, it dies. Yes, Ruby. It, the description reads, Spoink bounces around on its tail. The shock of its bouncing makes its heart pump. As a result, this Pokemon cannot afford to stop bouncing. If it stops, its heart will stop. That is the actual description in Ruby, and it's amazing. Um, they mention that. That is kind of the description in Black and White and Black and White 2. Actually, pretty much all the games mention that. I played Violet. It actually <laughs> says that again. It's like verbatim, if it stops, it dies. Oh, it actually says dies in, in Violet. Never mind. Okay, that is tragic. So, uh, pfft, what do we call this guy? We're calling him. Rebox. Rebox. Like the shoes, I guess. Uh, let's see if, uh... Oh, it's kind of being weakened already. Now nah, we'll, we'll have a Kiproni battle. On our way back down. There you go, hello there, individual. How you doing? Woo! Jagger Plaza is hard to walk on, it's good to place for training. Okay, sure. So, uh... So, yeah, I, I feel like these, uh, these GPUs... Like... I don't think NVIDIA is in the particularly best place because they've released such a massive performance difference between two cards. I feel like the 4070 is kind of like, well, it's decently worth something. I don't know. I don't know how to phrase it. I think this is just rough cards. Um, and especially for AMD, where they just don't have anything in between right now. They are relying on that 7600, but like, I saw someone rumor and maybe, maybe there's truth to this, but it's like rumor that we're not even going to get an announcement of any other card until the end of the year or the beginning of next year. And I'm like, the moment you do the beginning of next year, you're in Battle Mage territory. Intel are going to come out with their own cards, and we're going to be in for the cycle again. Except, we might be under, you know, some cool Intel cards soon. Good thing there's Burn Hill there, otherwise I would be very stuffed for this upcoming gym. This gym actually probably isn't going to kick my butt too hard, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Um, so yeah, uh, here we are, Leverage Town. Um, not really too much to say other than, uh, let's throw ourselves out of gym. Do I just throw the water type and just, like, call it a day, or do I, like, attempt to juggle some of my other Pokemon? I have the... Let's see what he's got, by the way. Four saw? Okay. Um, I have a feeling that Rebox might be able to open for a little bit. I don't think there's any need to have 
you know, any evolution or every, any uh, level ups on um, March Tom. So he's already got Psy Wave, which is. Uh, forget how much damage Psy Wave does. Um, Psy Beam is a fairly good attack. Uh, Otis Sleuth is not needed at all, and. Uh, Psycop is yeah yeah Psycop's out attack. I'm just I'm just double checking. What's uh What's my uh oh where is Psy Wave? Where is Psy Wave? Have they oh it's not in the newer games is it? Yeah okay Psy Wave I need I need this as a fact. Psy Wave inflicts damage equal to the floor of the user's level times 10r plus 50. That's in brackets where r is a random number between zero and ten. So I guess. It will be the level of the user times uh, 50 to 150. Uh, and uh, then all divided by 100. So it's basically the user's level, maybe half, maybe 150%. Okay, sure. That'll be an interesting attack. We also got here the herb shot. Do, are, you, are you someone who says herb or herb? I'm a herb guy. I like my um, but I'm also the kind of guy who says A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. Some people say H, and I think those people would also say herb. Uh, but yeah, the, the herbs are pretty interesting um, because they're bitter, and what that means is that it actually drops your friendship when you use them, but you can get Revival Herb. This is a full restore that costs a bit less than a full restore. These are also like super potions and hyper potions for fairly cheap. Uh, but you might also be the kind of person who's using the attack return. And return is not very kind if you are doing this. My wife's warming an egg in the hot springs. That's what she told me. She left two Pokemon with a daycare and they discovered that egg. Zigzagoon, what did you do to that Wobbuffet? Oh boy. Uh, so anyway, let's tackle on the gym. There's really not much in this town other than the gym. Hey, how's it going, champion Bound B&O? Oh? Larverage's gym leader Flannery uses, uses fire-type Pokemon. The passion for Pokemon burns stronger and hotter than a volcano. Don't get too close to her. You'll burn! Hose her down with water and then go for it. Have a gym where you constantly, uh... Bouncing around, basically. I think some of these are trainers. Or you drop next to trainers. Or you drop in front of trainers. No, some of these are trainers. Can your Pokemon withstand 392 degree heat? Well, you'd be turning around in a circle and then you go another 32 degrees, so... Got him. Oh, he's got the bait. He's got Kecleon. Oh. Uh, so do we go with a side beam or a side wave? I'm going with a beam or with a wave for the moment. I wasn't going that much damage, was it? Fan attack's gonna wreck me, isn't it? That's surprising. That is surprising. Let's get him with a beam, just to just to gauge as well. Is the beam better? Or well, the beam is not uh not as right, because it's also psychic type. Okay, we're switching out. Dang it. Dang it, Rebox, you were supposed to be the chosen one, but that's okay. Uh let's just go with the right. I give up. Um now, I was also expecting some uh, NVIDIA announcements. Uh, well, I wasn't expecting them to release a card just before their, you know, Computex conference. Uh, but they seem to... Uh, I watched the first hour of it, and it's that classic, you know, Jensen Huang kind of, the more you buy, the more you save. Uh, the I am AI, I even wrote this music. And uh, he said one more thing. He wore his jacket. You are a gym leader trainer. What are you doing, doing the hyper potion stuff? Kecleon's a weird one, by the way, because um, he changes type to whatever move you hit him with. So I was tempted to use Kecleon, but um, yeah, he's he's not the easiest to to plan around, and especially for me, I'm like. Because his type changes all the time, it's like, oh, what exactly do you like go with in order to, you know, to actually benefit from that? And also, how do you prevent your, you know, your opponents from exploiting that? Because sometimes they will. Same thing with Shedinja. It's just like, yeah, you could plan for the type, but who knows? 
So I believe uh, Swank evolves decently soon. He actually might be the, well, not the next evolution, because Crowbar is just Crowbar. Uh, Marsh Top is nearly there. Oh, 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 yikes, it's up. Uh, Marsh Top is almost there, but uh, Slugma seems to be, well, Slugma is already lower level. It's the worst place for a Slugma. Oh, look, a Slugma. It's like, what do you do? What do you do against him? Get him with a Psybeam. Now that's what I'm expecting, although I think that's also because Slugma kind of sucks right now. He's got smoke though, and you know what that means. Gotta get poisoned every time. But yeah, I didn't really get too much from uh, Ellie's consumer stuff at the, uh, the Computex, at least for the first hour. Uh, he did mention the, um, the 4060 Ti, he pulled it out for a moment and then held a laptop at the same time. Um, I do think the laptops are very impressive, but obviously uh, the DIY computer market is not the same as the laptop market. I think a lot of um, laptops... But like, yeah, I, I, I kind of feel like all these laptops are decently competent. Like, what people actually want out of a laptop, and it's like, yeah, it does the job. I like how um, Spoinker is like actually able to just start taking out all these dudes. We're up against a new one now, though, so... Who knows? Maybe it was just good luck against Slugmas, you know? Using Psybeam is not the age-old strategy it should be. I don't know, that's a good amount of damage. Uh, it's a bit of damage back, and... Mm, I'm not comfortable. I'm not comfortable. Uh, let's go with Sedimenta. Get that back burner experience. Oh, he tried to ember me. That's still a lot of damage. Meanwhile, I can't do much back at him. Oh, okay, I'm just gonna get killed by Magnitude 9, I guess. Listen, there's an experience share later in the game. I'll be able to at least, like, benefit off that. But, man, you know? Slugma is just... he's just... He's never been good. He might be better once there's like a lot of um, grass types coming up. Maybe not on this stream. We might we might not be quite there on this stream, but definitely on the um, on our future streams there'll be a lot of grass types for a moment, and then there won't be. Also, not using I'm not using a grass type on my team. I'm gonna be very gutsy and have uh, multiple Pokemon that are weak to water. <laughs> That'll be good fun. Very big building on the inside when you think about it. Good thing these trainers just kind of sit here so you get to know exactly like which places you should and should not be in. Yeah, but ultimately I don't know uh, how to feel about a lot of like current tech. Trying to relieve my stress. Don't come along and stress me out. Don't stress me, bro. Uh, yeah, uh, I guess. I don't know. Am I trying to come up with a conversation about tech when it doesn't exist? Yeah. I guess I'll just say that. So. Oh, the sto oh, boy. Oh, the story is computer tech is cool, but kind of pricey, depending on where you're looking. I'll just say that. I didn't really have a point, so... You know what I did have a point on? I was chatting to some mates about, uh, the best games of 2023, or the worst games of 2023, and in particular, is 2023, uh, one of the worst games, or worst years, for video games? Uh, which is an interesting kind of discussion, because this comes up every so often. We talk about, like, you know, what years are good, what years are bad, and I think the, uh, the main thing is, what do we actually define as a good year? I hope Flattery Flames you good. That's a name that's got to be all caps. What do we define as a good or a bad year? It's 1605, I'm finally back from college. What's up, Mr. Crip? How you doing? Mr. Crip flexing his 24-hour time knowledge on me. Where does this one lead to? Oh, the same 
the same drop. I understand how this gym works. Oh, and I held left. I'm an idiot. Um, well, yeah, I, we were talking about good and bad years for, for video games, and I think the main feeling... Uh, words about college already say how it's going for you. <laughs> you're, you're stuck in those books. You're, you're, you're focusing hard. And that's always good. Ah, the hole was a trainer. Yeah, that was a study. Oh, bruh. Oh. My favorite fire type, Meta type. He's in the fighting gym as well, and it's just like he spams psychic attacks. What's the odds you're gonna see him in the psychic gym? Probably very, very high because this game came out 20 years ago. But yeah, no, I, I do remember doing like fairly intense study at, at a uni as well. It was like, it was like sometimes, um, I'd pull some long nights. Especially on the projects, the projects would always be done two minutes before the project is due. And it's not even because, like, I saved it for the last, you know, two days. It was actually, I would work on it consistently, and then it's just... Uh, what is, what is even a team at this point? I think I missed a few Pokemon catches. Oh! Okay, so I have four out of my six Pokemon. Uh, and I currently have two... Mm, that I'm not really leveling up, but... Uh, <laughs> so, uh, Brushy keeps getting items, and every time I look, he's always picked up something. Uh, I now have a Spoink called Rebox. Uh, so I've got that. Uh, I have Nonogram the Ninjask. Uh, I have my Hatchem Slave, uh, the Sableye from that one gym. Uh, Slugma called Sedimentar. And finally, Kipperoni the Marsh Tom. Chillin'. Uh, Sedimentar is really not having a good time. I caught him last stream, and he's just perpetually not the right Pokemon to have. Meanwhile, I just caught Spoink, and Spoink seems to be doing wonders. I think that was the last trainer as well. He must be getting tired by now. So, uh, it's a bit of a weird team right now, because... Uh, well, I don't think it's too weird a team, actually. Because I think the bit is that Spoink covers my special attack kind of angle. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love this. He's, he's a chunky boy. I unfortunately am not playing the game that says he dies when he stops bouncing. That, that's Pokemon Ruby and various games afterwards. But yeah, I think Spoink will cover my special attacker spot, and he will definitely pick up into that once he evolves. But even then, it's like, you know what? He's doing, he's doing fairly alright right now. I don't know how well he's going to do against the gym leader, because... Uh, well, this is the last trainer before the gym leader. But you know what? I'll take a stab. I'll try and see how much of the gym leader can I actually beat without using... Uh, the magnitude like it. So, he is gonna live forever, exactly. Whoa. I don't, I don't, well, I don't think he's gonna live this one. We'll see how this one goes. Oh, oh, Hey! Hey, my boy! Dude, I'm having good, good feelings about Rebox. I'm having really good feelings about him. I'm gonna see, how much of this gym can I do without just relying on, on Marsh Tom? Because it's, it's, it's kind of, you know, it's not cheating, it's just kind of the obvious thing to just use the Water-type Pokémon on the Fire-type gym. Uh, I will definitely preface by just saying, uh, all three Pokémon that Flannery has are all Fire-type. I got no, no bets against that, but I also don't think I have... Ooh. No, Ninjas is weak to fire, so you might be a bit oof on that one. Yeah, I'm curious what, what the, what's going to happen here. I got Slugma, and Slugma is just like... <sighs> it's not, no, it's, it's, it's not going to... I think he's got one strat to Slugma. I don't think it's a good strat, but... Ninjask at least is quick, <laughs> and can at least, maybe, have a chance of hitting my opponents. This is a weird gym, just hug the left wall all the time. Then you come up to the top, and then you go back down. Listen, I don't mind this gym, actually. 
This was when, you know, puzzles were, were early days in Pokemon. Yeah, it's a pretty fair puzzle in the end. Okay, so let's just have a crack at it, I guess. Remember, I got my butt kicked by, um, uh, by Archie so many times before, so... Welcome, no wait. Puny trainer, how good to see you've made it here. I have been entrusted with the- No wait, I am Flannery and I am the gym leader here. Uh, dare not underestimate me though, I have been leader only a short time. With skills inherited from my grandfather, I shall, uh, demonstrate the hot moves we have honed on this land. It's a very foggy gym. Everyone loves Flannery. Okay, so... The first one we got is Slugma. This is a... There's two Slugmas. I believe this one knows Overheat, Smog, Light Screen, and Sunny Day. Listen, I got caught out by the confusion a lot on the last stream. I'm feeling good about dishing it back on whoever's... You know... The weakling here. Slugma is just... I don't know what's going on! Like, my Slugma sucks. And all of their slugma sucks. Rule 34 artists really. Uh, rule 34 artists love a lot of Pokemon characters. Nessa, the one that doesn't wear shoes. Uh, various of the the main character uh, you know, ones. Uh, who's another one? Um, the professor from. Which one's the one where you like press? Mash A to pound the thing in, in uh, Sun and Moon. Gem for attack and special split don't happen yet. Well, the attack and... The stats are still there. I would imagine Slugma shouldn't get caught out too hard. It's... He's just... Like, he's doing this, and he's... You know, okay. Oh, I forgot to read out this guy's moves. So he knows Flamethrower, Rock Slide, uh, two different attacks, but he also still knows Light Screen and Sunny Day. That Light Screen is... Oh, okay, sure. That light screen is kind of annoying because it does put a damper on my special attack, and that is going to be a bit in the way of uh, Reebok going. Um, Gen 4 attack and special. Uh, Sud Slugmer is not that hot. Well, he should be one of the hottest Pokemon out there. He's so hot, he warms up eggs. Now, there's the Flame Tower I know and love. Uh, the, the Sunny Day is definitely going to add. Mm, Fine, I'll just, I'll just skip Aroni, otherwise my team is actually going to get swept a bit. Because he... Oh, dang. Uh, I'll just go with a tackle. I'll probably win. Maybe not. Okay. Uh, but yeah, that light screen is kind of in the way because that does produce special attack damage. Uh, which is especially... Uh, problematic when you're trying to deal water attacks, I guess, because all water attacks are special in this game. Uh, do I sweep Torkoal? I'm gonna have a crack at, uh... Yeah, Sedimenta, go in for it. I have a terrible feeling about this. Okay, the Torkoal knows. Overheat, Body Slam, Flail, and Attract. By switching out to Sedimenta, at least it can't use Attract. Unfortunately, it's gonna use Body Slam. Well, that was a good run. That was a real good run. I'm glad that was the case. Uh, to the ninjask. This is this is my slugma. You know, uh, every time I've sent him out, he's always just been like, "Ah, look, I just got killed." Um, I don't think I've got too many attempts at this. Really, I would love to pull the sword stance, but to be honest, oh gosh, that was a crit. I always hits two times. It's gonna spam overheat, and overheat is gonna be a bit of a curse move, and especially with uh, the uh, the sunlight going on. Uh, because how much damage does overheat have? It's 130, isn't it? Yeah. But then it lowers the user's special attack by uh, two stages. So that's the thing with overheat is that it's going to nerf his future overheat. He's gonna pull it off. It's got knives and accuracy, so it's gonna happen. Should at least make me a little more capable of going up against him with reflex. That is a lot of damage. Oh yeah, but uh, granted, it was also a you know a super effective attack. 
Oh, he still has light screen up, doesn't he? Yeah. Now, unfortunately, Body Slam is not a special attack, so... Well, turns out I the rest of my team kind of suck. I'll get there. Okay, well, I had to rely on the water gun in the end. Oh, well. I got there in the end, I guess. Done. I wanted to see how good the rest of my team was, and apparently they're all lopsided because Kipperoni's one level away from evolving, and he's trying to learn takedown, which is, to be honest, at least I prefer that over tackle. Although I'm still running into the whole accuracy issue. My shot's also a good attack, but we'll keep it instead of tackle, just you know, for funsies. Also, real talk, Sableye would totally be my catch-all, because you can't use Body Slam on the Sableye. I'm not even trying to, like, run Sableye on my team, but weirdly, he's still constantly, like, a Pokémon I would keep using. So I got the, the Heat Badge, you know, it's a hot old badge. All Pokémon up to level 50! And it also lets you use Strength, which I don't know when you need to get Strength. And, uh, you get TM50, which I believe is also, that is, um, Overheat. So, there you go, yeah. Flick Sirius down. So you can, you can be the person who uses Overheat as well. Nice. Now I shall leave. Leave your clutches. Now obviously, after that battle... Oh, uh-oh, time to fight this guy. Nah. Hey, no, hey, it's been a while, how's it going? Mm, that's a decent collection of badges, alright then, you may as well have this. Obtain the Go Goggles? Or the Go Goggles? I'm going to call it the Go Goggles. Keep those with you if you plan on going to the desert near Route 111. There should be some Pokemon that are exclusively desert worlds. You might look around for those. As for me, I'm considering challenging Norman, the gym leader of Petalburg. Unlike you, Bino, your dad looks like he's really tough. What? Oh, oh, what was that dig? What was... Excuse me, did you see this? Did you see- did you see that? I feel insulted. So we got a couple of places to go, but he basically gives the, you know, the letdown of, Hey, yeah, by the way, you should battle your dad. And at this point, after collecting four badges, uh, your, yeah, the Pedalberg Gym is now available. And that is actually the next place to be. Back-to-back -back gyms. Uh, but he also gave you the Go Goggles, which opens up uh, a new area over here. In Route 111, you can now just travel up through the desert. Uh, the desert contains a couple of Pokemon uh, that you can get uh, in the deep, deep sand here. Uh, oh, have I lost my internet again? I lost my internet again. Telstra, what are you doing? Uh, also, what did I say? I am a little but dead to hear it. A little but dead? They look better on me! Does that mean he's not wearing Go Goggles? What is he doing? Camp it Drew! It says welcome to the chat room. That implies that I've gotten a connection again. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, so you're gonna have trainers have a... You know, like, a sand shrews and stuff. And yeah, that is one of the Pokemon you can catch here. Uh, yeah, I'm full offline. Uh, also, because Sandstorm, all non-ground type Pokemon will be affected by the Sandstorm between turns. Uh, which isn't the most fun, but it's workable. Steam back, steam back, steam is back. I don't know, I... I yeah, I, I said this one earlier, I don't know what's going on, because my internet, one, also, my internet has been mostly fine, um, but yeah, my download speed, just the download speed, has been atrocious, and, I don't know, I haven't played any multiplayer games. Actually, yesterday, I will say, I was playing the Avengers game some more, and I am actually at the end of the game, to the point where the only thing I have left, achievement-wise, is level up a faction to level 25, which purely relies on me doing dailies for a couple more days. Uh, but yeah, yesterday, I lost connection to the server. Um, but I didn't lose connection to the Discord call I was streaming it to. I guess that's the random damage kind of kicking in with, a uh, With, uh, that, uh... 
Um, it's probably my internet, but it's been very inconsistent. Uh, so I, I'll probably ring up Aussie Broadband about this. Dang it, Aussie Broadband, but... Uh, yeah, it's just purely, the only thing I can measure is my download speed is very atrocious for like what I'm paying for. But the upload speed seemed fine, the jitter and the ping seemed fine, and I can't really make it worse. Like, I can't specifically do anything about it. Maybe I could yell at my sister, because she's doing university stuff. And Reebok side, nice. Um, Nimi strike back first, I destroy- oh. Boy. Listen, where, what's a, what's a Australian aquatic animal that could be of note? But yeah, boy. Oh boy, yeah, no. It totally is the, um, totally is the emus. Uh, what was I saying earlier? Oh yeah, 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 so there's a couple of Pokemon you can get on... Oh, I still got the item finder on select. I was like, well, my bike saying no. Nope. Um, but yeah, no, the, um, don't worry, they also got to me. Ah, oh, rip. <laughs> I hate, I hate when you get internet outages, because it's just like, it's so difficult to diagnose. You'd think we'd get to that point where it's like, it's very easy to know, oh, okay, the internet is like currently unstable for this connection or this person. But it's like, every time it drops, it's just like, how does one explain that? We should be, like, logging, like, which connections just don't exist anymore. And we shouldn't have 100 megabits be the, like, the enthusiast thing in Australia, I swear. Russian bear enforcement. Oh boy, I'm getting sand attacked. Oh boy. He's got a sand slash. It's like, you know, we're getting to that one point where it's like, oh, there's gonna be a bunch of trainers who are kind of... There already. Oh, there you go. Knew it. The moment is... Oh. Oh. Uh, but yeah, so there's, uh, there's four Pokemon you can get in this route. I am not catching any of them. Don't worry. I, and I think, personally, I think I am done catching Pokemon for my team. If that makes sense. You'll, kn you'll know what I mean probably later this stream, actually. He's digging a tunnel to, uh, to China. <laughs> My mom used to say that, and it's like, China isn't even the opposite side of the world, and then she'd say England, and then I'd do the measurement, you'd actually be in the Atlantic Ocean. There's very few places that you can actually do an Earth sandwich where it's like perfectly, um, you know, like the other side is still land. And it can't be done, but at least here in Australia, uh, the Atlantic Ocean is most of that, so. He's back from China. He's, he's still chilling there. I'm just gonna sort of dance. He's, he's chilling on the ground, and I... While, while you... While you were busy digging a hole to China, I was practicing the blade. <laughs> oh, no. It's not even hitting me. It's just... Oh, no, don't you dare. Okay, phew, phew. Sandstorm raging is kind of annoying though, I'll tell you that. I'll get there though, I'll get there. There we go. Couple more hits now. Finally. Uh, can we make a repeat joke like the dungeon? Oh, like he's going to China? He's digging to the dungeon. He was in the dungeon. This guy's searching for the dungeon. There are dungeon people all over the place. Why does this guy give you so much money as well? Okay. So here's a fun little bit. There's just this weird obelisk down here that totally doesn't mean anything. At all. Just there. Uh, you can also get a sandstorm here, which is actually pretty cool. Interestingly, uh, I know someone's going to mention it. Uh, Castform is a Pokemon later that responds to weather events. For some reason, Sandstorm is not one of them. Uh, but yeah, there's a bunch of Pokemon here. Uh, Cacnea is the one grass type you can actually get, and Cacnea is very cool. I do like him. I'm very tempted to make him my grass type of the of the gen. Uh, he digs so hard he made a ton of Gen 4 online. Oh boy, he did. Hi there. Oh, I'm having a picnic in the desert. You can always find a trainer, so I can enjoy a battle here too. What? Wow. Should you do a 
picnic in the desert. Don't say, because I'm eating sandwiches. I just realized Rubox's health is max health, that is. It's the funny number. Uh, so yeah, so you can catch Cacnea, uh, mentioned Sandshrew already, uh, Voltoy appeared earlier, um, not as a wild Pokemon yet, but you can catch him here. The last one, I haven't seen one of these yet, is a Trapinch. Trapinch is notoriously annoying because he has an ability called Arena Trap, which means you can't run away. But that also makes him really good if you want to use him on various other Pokemon that uh, you don't want to run away. I love the Bell Toy sound. That's, that's what he sounds like, apparently. Um, so yeah. So yeah, so chat to the mates about what games and what years are the best and the worst for games. And I think the, the key thing... Also, Baltoy's a psychic type, so that probably doesn't make my mouth better. And, and then he bans you from competitive play with a move that reduces speed. I wonder if Slugmo could do okay. Nah, just go on, Kipperoni. <laughs> Banning me from competitive play yet again. Um, so for definitions, I guess, um, I guess it's like, what do you feel makes a year in games bad? And for me, I kind of feel that what makes a year bad is when the best games of the year, just the select cream the crop, are not exactly like, you know, best of all time, but kind of just, well, there wasn't anything better. Um, I guess a case in point example is, uh, Overwatch being a common, and yeah, I get to rip on Overwatch by the way. Did I? I didn't rip on Overwatch too. I'm gonna do that afterwards. Um, but, uh, the, uh, oh, like, Overwatch is a fair game. It, it, when it came out. It was a good game. I did really like it. But I could 100% understand why people didn't think it's... Best game of all time. Can't wait for Overwatch 3. <laughs> Isn't it weird that TF2 outlived both Overwatch and Overwatch 2? <laughs> um, <laughs> but, like, for when it came out, it's it's a fair game. I really enjoyed it. I, would I say it's one of the best games of all time? Yeah, because it's got its issues. It had its weird little bugs at first. It was um, weirdly late in doing things. They took their sweet time doing any events and then they came out with two of them. Uh, Sup Panda Club, how's it going? It's gonna outlive Overwatch 3. Oh, exactly, yeah. We got the Rebox trying to learn Confuse Ray. Do I really need Confuse Ray? I don't really know if Psychop is really gonna come into play, so might as well. Ah... Uh, yeah, no, I enjoyed Overwatch, um, at least. But best game of the year. You know, it probably is one of the best games of the year. But is it also, like, if that's the best we've got, then, you know, was 2016, like, a good year? The oh my goodness, you've got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. That's three times in the first hour of the stream. Have I got an alert on my phone about, like, the network? Like, no, no alerts, Aussie Broad Dan. No alerts. I'm gonna, hold on, I'm, I'm putting up the app on my phone. I'm, I'm doing a, you know, an APB for this one. I'm going, Aussie Broad Dan, I got no internet. Either that or it is Twitch itself. Here we go, I'm going service test. We're going, you know, check connection. Am I currently on the internet? Okay, I apparently am. Huh? Let's go NTD status. Let's get the status of uh, the network termination device that's chilling in the other room. Uh, we'll stop stopping by for a little bit. That's okay. Although, unfortunately, if you keep stopping by and, and uh, somehow my connection to the Twitch servers keeps dying every so often. Is Sedimenta actually going to kill a Pokemon for once? Oh my goodness, Sedimenta. Can he do it for the ball toy as well? I don't think he can, but maybe, maybe he can. Oh, I got more swellies again. I apparently was back for a hot second. I'm not gonna be beat this guy with his cut mud slap. And my accuracy fell, which means, you know what? I ain't hit him. Done. Uh, 
Uh, apparently my NCD is connected, which means... Uh, and it's been up for nine days. I have not rebooted anything in a while. Maybe I should be rebooting stuff. Who knows? Maybe it could be Twitch having a fun moment. Who knows? Oh, he held on, bro. He held on. Oh, he's got the rapid spin as well. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. If, if Overwatch is the best game of 2016, or at least one of the best games, does that mean that 2016 is a bad year because you don't have, like, you know, you don't have your 2001 titles. You don't have your Gran Turismo 3, your, uh, your Metal Gear Solid 2, your Grand Theft Auto 3, your Ico, your Silent Hill 2, I think was also 2001. Um, I think Deus Ex was 2000. Was it 2000 or 2001? Maybe. Who knows? Uh, here's an interesting uh, part of the game. I need a liveness check, by the way. Am I actually, like, on the chat now? Because it says I'm on the chat, and I just want to double check that people are going to respond to this. Look at these swells. I love these swells. This is a fun sandstorm effect. And I love that, like, on the Game Boy Advance, it's like, all you got to do is, like, just have, like, a repeating texture with transparency and just, like, layer it on top. There you go. Wonderful effect. Let's also do a Pokedex check. I have seen 71 and own 9, which makes sense. I forgot how many are in the actual Pokedex. I think it's... is it actually 200? In the... The regular Pokedex, or is it 150? Who knows? Well, I might not have a liveness check. Who knows? We'll get in with it. I'm apparently sending stuff to Twitch. Or I've alienated my audience with a bad internet connection. Anyway, there are two fossils. There is the core fossil. If this fossil is taken, the other will sink into the ground. Okay, there's the claw fossil and the root fossil. This is a choice of getting one of two fossil Pokemon, and the both just chilling there. The claw fossil more, I believe. Now, I actually have a Pokemon I want to get, and I'm gonna get the claw fossil. So, yeah, yeah, indeed, I have, I have wanted to, and then it just disappears, forever gone. That's okay, my man. Um, I swear my internet is, like, dying so much, so it's just like, oh, everything's, er everything's off the rails. Uh, any missing, you know, parts of the stream, you know, the VOD will be there on YouTube. I had the stream open the entire time, but for the fossil, I had to comment. It's worth it, it's worth the comment, but yeah. But yeah, no, I, I, I'm gonna go with the Claw Fossil. We're now talking about how it was, uh, when we first played Gen 3. It was ages ago, I think, when I played it, but I, I really liked playing Gen 3 because it was a fun social moment. I, like, I didn't know that many mates who played Gen 2, although I did have some, but a lot of my mates who really enjoyed, like, the, the discussions of Gen 2. As a four-year-old, by the way, as a four to five, six, seven-year-old, and we were like, yeah, Pokemon's amazing! And then they'd get in on it, and this was the game they get in on. Also, uh, at the top of this route is... You know, past the... past the mountain. So you don't have to go through the emu attack- Oh yeah, the emus are attacking all day, apparently. So it's gone out three times in this one stream already. It's very irritating, but... Yeah, if there's any missing parts on the stream, don't worry, because I record all these myself. Oh, it's a trap inch! I record all these offline, and then, um... They all end up on YouTube from my offline recording, so none of the, uh, none of the, uh, I think the only thing that you'll know is that the bit on the screen that says my chat died. That's the only thing that will indicate to YouTube bot that my internet died. I've never had this happen where it's, like, continually just cut out. So I have a feeling it might actually be a Twitch server that's just, like, not having a fun moment today. Listen, if I was a business customer, I would be very upset. This would be, you promised 99.99% uptime, which is virtually impossible, by the way. I don't know who the heck keeps guaranteeing that kind of stuff. It's like, oh no, our internet connection was down for five seconds. And suddenly we now have no, you know, budget, no SLA budget for the entire year. It's like, oh. Oh yeah, by the way, Steam started to change people's regions and, uh, 
You got in this batch. Oh, so you can't buy games on your account now. Ooh. Uh, those are the five trainers, by the way, on that route, and really, that's not too much. You mostly go there for the fossil. Um, which means you got deported from Argentina to Russia. Oh, it, as an in Steam. <laughs> I was like, you didn't physically get just get deported like in the last week. Yeah. You gonna go now? Keep up the good work. Thanks, Panda Club. Have a good one. Oh my gosh, there's the Kecleon he left behind. It's not even a visible Kecleon. So we need to get all the way back to the starting place. Uh, there's two ways of going about it, but I think the best way is to go back through uh, this tunnel. Um, that one rock is permanently uh, destroyed. Uh, there's not really any right way of going back. Um, and there's not really anywhere to also go to on the way. It's just kind of... No, sure. Walk back. Uh, you can buy games, but my home region prices are back. Ah, rip. Rip. Because the Russia prices are good. I will still say one strange thing and the sanctions. Oh. Why are we lifting the sanctions, bro? I don't know. I'm putting on my politics hat for a moment and it's like, oh boy. Like... The, the sanctions have seemed to affect our, like, sale, or not our, as, as in, I'm not the US, but, uh, there's, oh, wait, yeah, hold on, I need to go to here, with the fossil, this is also why you go to the fossil, or get the fossil, they're gonna improve my life, I guess this war has been going on for like 15 years, hasn't it, one of these people talks about fossils, Oh wow, that's a Poke- oh, that's a Pokenab. <laughs> yeah, okay, thanks bro. Who's the guy who takes the fossil? I've completely forgotten. The other guy who takes the fossil? And it's working! <gasps> Wait, I think you have there. Is that a Pokemon fossil? Would you like to bring that Pokemon back to life? I can with my newly developed fossil regenerator. Let's do this right away. That's one drawback. It takes a long time. Uh, go for a stroll. I forget how long it takes. Uh, I'm gonna hope it's it's leaving. It's like three dollars seven. That's good that you buy the games before they go expensive. And on top of that, like, I mean, third party key sellers are also being online deported. That's just like using a VPN, I guess. So I shall now forever put away, or well, at least for a while. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye, Sableye. Shopping his store for Beholder. There is, uh... Yeah, there's, uh... Oh my gosh, I'm not getting it. No! I'm disconnected! Hold on, I'm actually gonna load a page this very second. No, I'm back in the chat. I'm back in the chat. I need, like, a ping like, on the screen at all times, just so I'm very aware of when the time goes out. Thanks for waiting, your fossil -like Pokemon has been brought back to life. The fossil was an ancient Pokemon. Anorith! Anorith? Now I've got to think of another name. Uh, we'll call him... Riff Raff. Riff Raff. Heck yeah. <laughs> There's no celebration. It just you just get this Pokemon, but I find it's actually like really soon to get a fossil Pokemon. Wait, <laughs> wait, wait, when I wanted to buy games about anti Utopia, I didn't want to get back to my <laughs> So is uh Anorith an Uh Battle Armor is a super nice ability blocking critical hits. Um the impish nature is interesting, I guess. Uh, but he's rock bug type, which is sort of curious because I'm gonna have a fire rock and a bug flying type, so I'm sort of doing some... I'm losing my patience with getting disconnected all the time. Um, but very importantly, look at that attack stat. That is a beautiful, beautiful attack stat. Um, he is a kind of late evolver, so he's probably gonna evolve later than Magcargo. But... I think that attack stat will carry him. Meanwhile, what is going on here, bro? Like, I think all of Anorith's stats are high except for the special attack. 
It is the Ember. Maybe that's what's going on. Um, and, uh, and of course, what attacks the center of hat? It's got Scratch and Water Gun. He'll get there. He'll get there. But right now, um, he needs to... Heroic Fury Cutter is one of the moves I wanted to keep, and I'm really, like, on the fence about that one. Because <laughs> he's bug type. Well, it's, it's worse in Australia, because we don't have... Our internet providers don't actually do much. If you are on a, uh, a wired connection here in Australia, you are on the government, the federal government NBN Co. connection, basically. Um, which was, uh, put in place in 2013, I think, after lots of budget, uh, issues. Maybe 2010, actually. Might have been older. Um, was it the Red Government? We'll just say that. Uh, and, uh, all of your issues stem from the public deployment, because it crossed multiple government hands, went through so many budget cuts, and then inevitably they delivered a kind of half-implemented solution that required digging up almost immediately. And uh, so therefore, they replaced your copper connection with copper connection in places, like mine. And it's not the worst, to be honest, because the copper was good and somewhat still is good. But it's like, why did I pay for this <laughs> with my taxpayer money? Wireless internet, right? Well, wireless internet is the thing, is that uh, my parents um, don't live in, uh, well, they don't have a wired connection because they didn't want to wire their connection. And their existing wired connection was, uh, ADSL, which goes over the phone lines. So their only solution was the NBN Co. representative would install a, uh, a dish on their house, and it would very hopelessly go from 5 milligrams to 23 kilograms? Your wireless internet keeps getting heavy. So here's the gym, how's it going, champion about being there? The doors in the gym open when you beat the awaiting trainers. Whoops, the doors in this room are already open, so don't attack me. The trainers of the Pedalberg gym use all kinds of items. The door at the left leads to the speed room. The door at the right leads to the accuracy room. The door's name will be on the door, so choose... Okay, so... Yeah, pretty much. This is an interesting gym because you actually get a choice of seven trainers? Uh, I don't know if, uh... There's actually any difference between these trainers. Um, maybe they spam a different X item at the beginning of the battle, but let's switch over to Sedimentar and see how far we get with him. Mega Bite, Kill Bite. Oh, okay. Speed room. But yeah, this is uh, this is basically a um, like a diamond shape. We've got two choices of rooms here, and then the right room here leads to the same room as if I went right and then left. Uh, so there'll be three rooms in a row, and then they'll both try and conjoin back up to two rooms and back up into the. The, the gym room. So you do have to fight at least three trainers. You get a choice. Oh, okay, so you just spam an X item at the beginning. Interesting. Gosh! How do you... I can't do anything with this guy, I swear. He should have decent special attack. Not the greatest. Not, it's not gonna be spoink. Yeah, wireless internet is always hit and miss when it comes to stuff. Like, with my parents, it, yeah, it was real shoddy. Um, he's really trying to do that thing. Uh, all these trainers also only have one Pokemon, so... Don't feel bad to just back out and, and heal if you need to. Well, at this point, it's a bit too late with the thing, isn't it? I feel this would be some good experience on Sedimenta, though. Also, the, I'm starting to, like... Internalized. This is gym number five out of eight. And granted, I think there's more in the second half of the game. You know, like the gyms come a bit hard and fast at the beginning, but again, uh, 5G is the technology of the future, which we will see only in the next time the sanctions are going to get lifted. They're not. You can't do 5G because of the sanctions. Ah, oh, rip. But I will also say 5G is a little bit like. I don't know if 5G is exactly blowing my mind because and I think 4G had the same issue where like it didn't have the range um, as, as 3G and now you know 5G is just even more harsh on that it's definitely a lot faster and it gives you um, you know all the all the fun superpowers that apparently it does um, but yeah I'm not really 
I don't like the idea of wireless being the solution, apparently. The only city which has 5G is, is Moscow. Yeah, like, I think I live in a 5G area, but, like, I don't think the adoption on phones is particularly that good yet. By the one hit KO move, is he about to use, like, Fissure on me? Oh, no, he's preventing one hit KOs. That, that's not gonna happen with this guy. St. Petersburg can't do it. Yeah, I, I think it's too early days for, like, 5G to, to be the be-all end-all. It's definitely like, you know, hey, let's have more devices use 5G and let's set up more towers, you know, like, wireless is a, um, you know, like, you can, you can set up one half of the solution like that, or it's like, fix wireless, or not fix it, like, when you install wires. Man, dude, that's a lot of damage. I don't think he's gonna live this one. I don't think he's gonna live this one. We're going over to Riff Raff. Let's get Riff Raff some points. Look at him, he's so derpy. I love him. Baltic State won't share the line, the only Russian. Uh, in the army hands. Oof. So, uh, Riff Raff has a physical attack, so therefore, Scratch is gonna be my go to move. Uh, uh, is not going to cover this. It's not going to cover this. Nope. Darn. Dang it, Riff Raff, you almost had it. Uh, let's go back to Sedimentar because he's technically going to die of poison in a moment. First try! Woo! <laughs> well. Let's try and learn Harden. I don't think Harden was one of the moves I would have learned. It's not for me, I don't think Harden is the right one to go with. Yeah, it wasn't one of the moves I had on this list. Imagine having like barriers on doors, like automatically like lock the doors like that. Yes, I am healing after every gym, or every trainer. It's because my Pokemon are level 22, and he's gonna have a level 31 slacking in the gym, and I'm gonna be very stuffed. Ah. Meta gaming. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, I feel like, you know, like, like, fixed wiring for internet connection should be one of the most straightforward things for, like, uh, public funding, I guess? I don't really know why it's, like, that strangely complex. Um, you know, don't... Don't have time for X grind. To be honest, though, I have not been fighting wild Pokemon just to level up yet. I've been doing fairly alright, to uh, <laughs> if you happen to be the leader's kid. I like this relationship going on as well, but... Yeah, I, I, I've been trying my best to not, like, you know, sit tight and, and fight things. I'm trying, I'm trying to, trying to get there. Uh, let's hit him with the smog. Then using a, an item here gives you at least a free turn. It did not give me the free turn. Oh boy, I'm gonna be screwed in a moment, aren't I? I'm gonna get swept by the Zangers who's been using Swords Dance. Oh, and he's got Fury Cutter. I don't- I'm, I'm very not confident about this, but we'll see how it goes. Because he's gonna- he's gonna spam that Fury Cutter. At least for two turns. Next gym leader fight. Monkey. True. True. For the next gym leader fight, I'm gonna at least have, uh, maybe another fire type attack. Maybe. Oh, he woke up right away. And then he thought I was going to switch Pokemon, but that's, oh, that's not fun. Well, at least he hit me with the flame body, I guess. Imagine being in the high attack zone and then just, like, getting hit with a, you know, flame body. Oh, he didn't use Pursuit. Oh, cool. Oh, 
Okay, uh, let's get him with the scratch. Ooh, that's kind of a bit fine. There you go, Riff Raff getting a kill. That was all Riff Raff. No setup whatsoever. He did it, he did it, easy, easy. Man, I feel like I, I'm just looking at Slugma's move list going, oh man, I really, I really haven't planned out how I'm going to have like good moves throughout the game. I'm just like, I will eventually have good moves. But for now, I won't. I really won't for so long. This is going to be an interesting one. Listen, if I sweep the Elite Four and stuff, I'll be a happy man. But until then, it's like, oh boy. How many trainers have I fought? Is that three? Out of seven? We're getting there. We're getting there. They all have normal type Pokemon. They all might have just Delcaddy, uh, Linoon, Giggle. This is the accuracy room. <laughs> it's pretty accurate. It nasty when every attack lands without fail. That's most attacks. Unfortunately, it's not most of the ones I use, but like, what is this like? Oh, uh, don't you hate it when attacks hit you? Like, yeah. Imagine what Nurse Joy thinks when you come back every five minutes. Come back with a dead slug. <laughs> I just... Oh, I love the fact that, like, don't you hate it when everything hits you? You just sing. It misses. Good job. Good job. Good job, accuracy move. Accuracy room. I mean, what is he gonna do? Get flame bodied? That's his strategy. That's her strategy, rather. Oh, okay. Flame body doesn't apply when it, you think it won't. I thought flame body applies on every physical attack. Is it because he's asleep? Is that actually how that's working? Flame body doesn't apply on sleep. Okay, well, that didn't work. And yes, I see Brush is gonna, gonna thing. I don't, I don't know. Look at how short he is every time. No. Oh, that's my luck. Yeah, hold on. Yeah, let me, I, I got, I got this open. I got this open. Flame body. There's a 30% chance, which means I'm probably unlucky because it didn't apply all three times. Does Growl a noise? Oh, I forgot. He's not getting anywhere. He's not getting anywhere on this one. Bro, I don't think I'd be able to buy any lottery tickets, like, ever. The- the one- the one thing, the- the odds will change- He's waking up real quick, though, I tell you that, but... He's being growled, and... Yeah. The- the one- the one thing I hope for, like, a lottery ticket, um, or kind of thing I want, is if I get a shiny Pokémon just to appear. Don't even have to catch it, but if that shiny Pokémon appears on stream, That'd be kind of cool, but... Until then, I'm getting hit by Double Slap four times. Which is a fun translation thing, because I think the tra the Japanese reads like, multiple hit slap, not double slap, but that's a fun one. Uh, so anyway, good years have lots of exemplary games in them, bad years, or at least weaker years in my eyes, are games that don't have as many exemplary games. Um, I think there are definitely years that have some real trash titles. Like, a lot of people will note SimCity 2013 as being the trash title. You know, it's notoriously one of the worst releases out there. Um, but it doesn't necessarily mean that 2013 was a bad year. I think it totally depends on the kinds of games that you did actually play in the end. Uh, for me, 2013 seemed disappointing. And then I remembered that I just got hit five times by Double Slap. Hey! Am I too slow for this? I am. This is the accuracy room. I didn't have any trouble with the other Delcaddy. 
Could be that Sing was not hitting as often back then. Garth's point is about to stop dancing, is he? Yeah, okay. Okay, so my back burners or my lower levelers are not having a fun time. Let's just go in for the uh, luck they sweep. <laughs> Every time! <laughs> Every time he only hits twice! I remember when my granga went to toy shop before going to Moscow and they gave you a lottery ticket with the words, Please take it, we will give you 300 rubles for the Lego. You take it, and you have it free, plus 300 rubles for the toy. Oh, as in because you can't win something? You can't win the toy, you have to win... Sorry, you can't win money? What? How exactly does that work? Oh, uh, sorry, no, reverse that. You ha you have to win the toy that just so happens to have 300 rubles with it. Is that how that works? That's always a, a fun loophole. It's the same thing with, like, um... Like, uh... That's another one. I, I'm pretty sure there's lots of things like that. We've done it here in Australia a bunch. So I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love. I needed to get rid of them so they gave them for free by giving them sale with another thing. Oh, okay. I know a, 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 um, a tech store online called uh, Shopping Express that notoriously has these bundles where they will sell you a thing for a bit of a discount and then we'll just throw in stuff like, uh... Like, I'm pretty sure just, like, loose USB sticks. Or, like, board games. We lost, by the way. RIP! RIP. I'm never getting out of this fight alive, am I? This one Del Caddy, I swear. I'm pretty sure being in love is a half chance as well, but now it's like, oh, okay, well, now Fury Swipes has to miss, and I've been growled 50 million times. We lost 300 rubles. That's not fun. I'm just relying on that crit at some point. Which, uh, granted, it is Fury Swipes. It's more likely to land a crit eventually, but... <sighs> That we lost plus 300 rubles. Stonks. Oh, oh, for legal purposes, you lost. Okay. What well, should be negative 300? That's, that's how much you lost. Like. <laughs> why why is this why is this the uh, the trainer that gives me the most problems it's it's just the eternal stun lock here there's only two del caddies as well so it's not like I'm gonna experience this at, at all with any of the other Pokemon but oh. the worst part as well is this del caddy isn't even trying to attack me he's constantly using attract constantly has been using growl Constantly has been using Sing. What is your your plan? You've got Double Slap. Use it. I'm not even weak to normal. I don't know. Or, or, you know. Finally. Finally, I've broken the. No, I haven't. <laughs> I have not broken the curse. Oh my goodness. This is gonna be a struggle fight eventually, isn't it? <laughs> okay, phew. I listen. I I, <laughs> I know, right? I've just been spamming this button for so long. I was a cut above you. I was so many cuts, man. I was so many cuts. <laughs> oh, how long was that trainer? That was actually like seven minutes or something, wasn't it? Horrendously long. Oh yeah, yeah, the internet doesn't die when I get stuck on a trainer. <laughs> oh, it's atrocious.
Oh, we're doing okay for now. We're doing okay for now. That wasn't even an accuracy. That was an accuracy thing on me. Hi there, defense room. The higher the defense, the more reckless I can be in attack. Is that how that works? Is it? Okay. Well, unfortunately for the defense room, I have still gone out with Sedimentar. Here's the strat in the showdown with my friend on sleep. Yeah. Oh, well, that's not defense. That's just sand attack. Come on, it's cheating. He proceeds to nearly one hit me with the headbutt anyways. Uh, I could switch out. I probably will, just because Sedimentar does need stuff. Can't attack it. Oh, that's true. Sedimentar needs experience, but he's just he's still not able to take out that many that many Pokemon. It's a bit of a shame. Sand attack is very annoying, though. Riff Raff currently doesn't really have a great attack to go off. All the moves I have on him, I don't think he's really going to get that many. Yeah, I got some plans. So, moral is, uh, with the games of certain years, and I guess this applies to maybe, you know, movies and music as well. You did it. You got there, you got there. You got there way quicker than the Del Caddy. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think for me, I'm just looking for those breakthrough titles. It's not necessarily that there's, uh, the Jaden one could not. What did Jaden one do? Who is Jaden? Which one is Jaden 1? Jaden 1. I'm thinking Tile 1. Uh, I type Jaden 1, I just get Jaden Animation, so that's... I don't know if Tile 1 has a strategy for Pokemon. I would love to play against Tile 1 in Pokemon. And he probably would beat me, just for fun. The one hit KO move. Jaden Nuzlocke Gen 3. I'm not gonna take it easy! Oh, okay. Oh, this is a person. Oh, this is also Jaden animation still. Okay. Well, the Claw Fossil ain't that useless. Alright, the dire hit isn't a one-hit KO, that's a high crit chance. For one attack, I think. It's a guarantee- oh, well he's burnt- well, it doesn't matter if he gets a crit, and he's gonna use Slash, which is- Okay, it does guarantee a crit. Oh, and then he fought the chain- ah, that's nice, that's good. I'm glad Slugma died in one hit, but- Oh, actually, no, sorry! He died in one hit, but he's supposed to be the, you know, the bulkier of my Pokemon. That's the biggest problem, is that, like, I, I expect a more defensive Pokemon, and I end up getting something that just doesn't really ever participate. It's not because his attack is that low, but, yeah. Meanwhile, Riffraff is currently, uh, enjoying the spoils of war. Came back with revenge, slaughtered her Pokemons. Oh yeah, because the champion's got one, doesn't he? Or someone in the Elite Four does. So I think that's six of the trainers? I got one more. I got one more. Don't worry, I got this. I got a little bit more, because <laughs> this is, uh... This hasn't been too much of a, of a stream. We've, been, we've just been fighting gyms. Gotta, gotta, gotta heal. Gotta have that. Here's my question. Who do I go in with the gym? I feel like I can't use Ninjask. 
because he just doesn't have a reliable attack yet. And that is entirely on me, but like, I'm looking at it going, Ninjas, like, hold on, what moves does he learn? Oh, level 31, that's it. Wait, hold on. Level 31, yeah, no, that's ages away. God knows Joy almost made it. Well, technically, I'm gonna use Nurse Joy. Use Nurse Joy, oh boy. Uh, two more times. One after this, one after the gym. Right. George! You found him! Uh. What was, what was the strat in this one? What was this room? Uh, it's apparently still the one hit KO move. Uh, room, apparently. Stuff it, we're throwing Ninjask at this guy. I'm taking way too long throwing my, my weak hitters. I want to wipe him out, dang it. I should have used Sword Saints. Have I got a crit in the middle? Ugh. I hate his strategy of just using, like... <sighs> using, like, sand attack all the time. This has the same strategy, it's just another one of his, like... Lanoons on the way. Oh boy. I thought the odds on sand attack were a little different as well uh, in the middle of the last stream, but when I looked it up and I was I was trying to figure out all the stats, I realized me missing Fury Swipes three times in a row means I just have trash luck. And Nonogram is entirely a luck-based Pokemon right now. He is he is so luck-based, it's incredible. But yeah, you get hit by um, sand attack once, and Fury Swipes, I think. I think someone who knows the source code of the game, or not the source code, someone knows the disassembly of the game, please confirm for me, if you get hit by sand attack, does Fury Swipes just magically not work as well? Like, by far. Because I think there is something wrong. I've not been hitting very much after one singular sand attack. Ah! I'd rather get killed off very quickly than to be in a... This is, this is a very sad fight. This is a very sad fight. This is what I would do in a fight. Every Fury attack strike counts as a sound attack. Well, it's not... But as in, like, just then, I missed three Fury swipes in a row. As in, the individual attempts at Fury swipes. Which would mean that, like... You, and I know, I know it's like, oh, okay, it's got an 80% chance to hit. And then when you've been reduced one stage of accuracy via sand attack, you should have a 75% chance multiplied by whatever you're, you're done with. That should be 60% chance of hitting. Me missing three times out of three, the odds aren't very in my favor. And Riff Raff is currently copping it as well. So, I'm not too upset, though, because I experienced that all last stream. I just accept now that he's not going to hit anything until he's level, um... Uh, until he's level, uh... Yeah, oh, it probably is rigged. There's probably something... I, I guarantee you, there is something weird in that code that's causing the number to supposedly... You know, like what Bob Peter and all this stuff says. The number that we all expect is not actually the number, like, the odds in the game. It's like how, um... Like, just naturally. When you do random number generation, you know, you've got like some noisy bit of memory that when you query it, it's going to give you a number and then you just let that bit of memory get noisy again. Sometimes they base the random number generation off, uh, like, um, they take a bit of system time, they call that the seed, um, and then they basically just multiply, like, a number by, um, I don't know how exactly to do it, maybe they add... No, yeah, you'd multiply it with that and, like, a, um... These are very bad at math, by the way. They are very bad at math, yeah. Usually you multiply by that and a prime number, and you'd be able to uh, iterate through, like, every, um... Prime number, or every, every number, eventually, as you keep moduloing, you know, 2 to the power of 32 or something like that. That's how you do your random numbers. Uh, but then it's like, well, okay, at the end I do a modulo 100 at the end. And, uh... You're gonna have a little bit more zeros than you will 99s if you modulo 100. Okay, who am I opening with? Well, first of all, Brushy, what do you got? Nugget? <laughs> a nugget? 
Okay, I'm gonna open up with Ninjas because I feel like I'm gonna be in a weird spot though. I think. I think I don't have a chance with Ninjas. I don't think I have a chance with any of these. Okay. Hmm. So you did get four gym badges. Fine. As promised, we will have a Pokemon battle. But you know, I'm so happy that I can have a real battle with my own child. Quote that one. Put it on my tombstone. Okay. So here is the normal type gym. Listen, if, I, if I'm screwed, I have a rare candy. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not getting stuck on this one. So he first comes off with a slacking. Uh, we have a whole, uh, load a whole library to use normal math functions and see what plus half of them work wrong. I mean, I know, I know C++ does have, like, C math as its library, and that is, uh, platform specific. Uh, half of them work wrong? That's kind of weird, but... Alright, so he's got four moves, uh... I was not expecting Facade to deal that much damage in one go. Uh, Facade is, uh basically just a uh, 70 power move, so I guess, yeah, maybe, okay, never mind. <laughs> um, Slacking is one of the strongest Pokemon in the game. In fact, actually, he's got some of the highest attack, and he's got really high HP still. That was five hits as well. Oh, but yeah, the one catch with Slacking. Maybe I should have accommodated for that, maybe. We'll see how we go. I'm probably not going to kill off the slacking, though. Uh, the one thing with slacking is that he's got an ability, uh, Truant, which means he loafs around every second turn. Doesn't matter what you do, when he doesn't attack, the next turn, he will not attack. He will always be chilling. Um, the fact that Nonogram got taken out means I don't think I have a strat, really. You could use your one. Nah, I'll just kick, kick him with the Ember. I don't know. I don't really have a plan, do I? Uh, you know in math how you can put a number in a square? Uh, C++ for some magic reason, the functions won't work, so we have to write two times two. Well, that's because, um, uh, the math library in C++, um, they don't have integer squares. They would have, uh, floating point, um, squares, just because the... So, I think you'd have, uh, um, yeah, the power function. Yeah, would be, uh... Yeah, power function's always a flow or a bubble. Um, I feel... I feel like I could just go with Kiparani, but... Kiparani also doesn't have too many good moves, does he? I think I am kind of screwed, though. Because, I, I, remember, this is still the first Pokemon. I have Takedown. I don't think it's going to carry me for the rest of the fight, so... Slacking is a max evolution, by the way, so don't feel bad about uh, slacking being uh, too tough. But uh, we got to keep keep going. He now has Vigoroth. This is the pre-evolution of slacking. Uh, unfortunately for me, uh, it still also knows Facade. Um, oh yeah, the slacking new Encore, Facade, Yawn, and Faint Attack. I guess he always wanted to just be using Facade in that one. I guess because it's an attack. This Vigoroth does no Slash, which is kind of annoying. Uh, also, Fane Attack, Facade, and Encore. It's kind of the same Pokemon, but the key thing is Vigoroth does not have um, the uh, nobody code on C++ of this code uh, at this point. Well, I, there's a lot of Unreal Engine developers, I guess. Um, let's do a Sony Bob. Let's just see how we go, I guess. Uh, so I think Dark is special, but I don't think his special attack is as high. Um, it's not too strong on, with Vigoroth. I hit him with two growls, so he shouldn't deal too much damage. Um, but Slacking, yeah, his attack stat is 160. It is crazy high, and his HP is 150. Oh, and his speed is still 100. He's not actually that slow either. But if you've got a good special, you know, his special defense isn't too high. His defense is 100, so that's still kind of crazy. I thought so. I thought he would. Oh. Um, but yeah, uh, I think most languages, yeah, power function or squares are, um, have to be done by just multiplying the same number twice. Uh, makes sense, just because, 
mean, if that syntax works, why do you need a square number function, I guess? Um, I wouldn't mind a, uh, a power or an expert. I was expecting to spam another Soddy Pop. Okay, uh, here comes the Rebox, please carry in there, but oh, I don't know if this is going to really work out. He's going with the Confuse Ray. Confuse Ray is going to be my saving grace if this man manages to work. I've had good luck with Rebox so far. I don't think this is going to uh, carry my fight, but we'll see how this goes. Yeah, the two growls aren't really going to help there, but... We might be okay. Yeah, we might be okay for a moment. Okay. This is kind of interesting. This is an interesting scenario. So, he's got two slackings! Hooray! Uh, this slacking... Wait, hold on. No, no I was going to say, I, I was an idiot, but no, I'm not an idiot. Or am I an idiot? I think I am an idiot, actually. I think I am an idiot, hold on. Uh... No, I'm not an idiot. Okay. <laughs> I, I was about to say, is Sableye weak to, to... Or rather, can Sableye be hit by Dark-type? The answer is yes, he can. Because all of these Pokemon, no fan attack. This guy, he knows Facade. Wow, original. Um... I don't have anything to really beat him with. Yeah. I think I'm stalling, I guess. I don't know what I'm stalling with. Water gun? Um, he also knows Focus Punch, Slack Off, Facade, and Fame Attack, so. Uh, this one's a bit more gnarlier. And Focus Punch is probably, uh. Well, I don't know if Focus Punch is really gonna throw him off, but. Because if he gets hit after using, you know, Focus punch, then, you know, he stops focusing. Is he gonna spam focus punch because I'm tight? That'd be interesting if I've just, like, figured out a hole in his AI. I don't think he's got enough PP on focus punch to make that count, though. It is 20 PP, though. This is the battle of the century right here. The AI, like, abuse right here. Oh my goodness. The nice thing as well is that if he burns all his, uh, all his PP on Focus Punch, he won't be able to use Focus Punch on the Spoink. Oh my goodness. I figured out the weakness of the AI. He thinks the fighting type attack will kill me, and then he loses focus every turn. This is, uh... <laughs> you know, I'm liking... I'm liking Anorith. A fair bit. I'm liking him. Because this is apparently the strategy. This is it. This is this is peak Pokemon right here. Little derpy eye guy right here. The only thing I'm, I'm hoping he doesn't do is he doesn't have like a hyper potion just chilling. Man, this is this is the battle of the century right here. And it's level 31. Like, you know, the levels start to climb up a little bit here. How's the PP doing? I'm gonna run out of PP. Oh, well, I'm gonna run out of water gun, but I'm not gonna run out of scratch, which still hits 100% of the time. But I don't know if the scratch is going to do as much damage. In theory as well, I could be raising my defense between turns. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to raise my defense between turns. Because th this is the problem with slacking and also this guy's AI. You could actually abuse the fact that the, the off turns let you build. The problem... <laughs> I wish, I wish I could have done that on the, um, on the other slacking, but it's also got Encore, which is like, that would have thrown me off real hard, and he didn't have this, and he killed me in like one hit anyway, so. It's 
stream online games with subs later on the line. Uh, I mean, I don't really play too many online games. That's my thing. I like playing the games that I played as a as a kid. Um, and in particular, like, I don't spend too much time on the channel. I kind of just go with like the the two the two hour stream on the Monday. It's definitely a thought, and I've I've definitely considered it like ages ago when I used to do way more adventurous. Oh no! He learned and he used the special attack, and my uses of Harden have kind of been for naught. And that didn't. Re that. Wow, the amount of defense I still. Fun for PS2 emulation online for stream? Maybe. Maybe, yeah. Okay, well, I got through two thirds of his health. Uh, let's see if I can hit that confuse ray, and then. We'll pray on this one. Do I have any revives? I think I have one revive. I have no revives. Uh, still no revives yet. Uh, imagine calling for a friend for console. Uh, Plants with Zombies 1 experience. Ooh. Well, let's have a crack at this. Oh, there's one. And he's got a high attack, so that's a considerable amount of health that he loses by... You know, hitting himself there. Oh! 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 What the? I'm genuinely impressed. I knew I had good luck with Rebox. Wow! I'm, I don't know why I'm genuinely impressed. That like. <laughs> <laughs> I have had trash luck with Slugma, I've had trash luck with Ninjats, and then the two that I caught this stream... It's pretty, it's pretty okay! It's pretty okay! So yeah, Facade by the way, it has a, um, uh, battle with monkey. Uh, Facade has, um, deals double damage if, uh, you have a status ailment. Um, he specifically says poison burn or paralysis, because frozen and sleep you can't attack through, so... Um, yeah, what the heck? Spoink lives. Spoink lives. That is incredible. I'm curious if I should teach Facade. I think I've committed to like Hyper Beam or some of my Pokemon. <laughs> I don't know if Hyper Beam is maybe a bit too overkill. I'll consider Facade. With modern Ukraine situation this scene. This is oh yeah. Just the I mean granted, granted, like what it what is our analogy for like him constantly using focus attack or focus punch and then just like missing because that's focus punch in a nutshell. That was the most like terrible strategy. I have been oh well he's become very healthy. Oh. Okay. This isn't a bribe, okay. But, uh, yeah, no, we get HMO3, which is finally the move to continue the game. I <laughs> I like how I didn't even acknowledge this, but on the Pokénad, uh, you can see that, like, okay, so we got Slateport City and we got, like, all this to the east from there, uh, which you can't go up, by the way. If you ever go there, you'll notice there's some waves blowing you back, which means the one way to go east, which just so happens to cross a little bit of water. That is the one thing that was stopping accessing the rest of the game, but... I mean, this is kind of like, you know, this has been half the game already, so we got a whole stretch of things to keep going on for. Uh, I think there's like some places and some trainers you can go back and fight, but they're also a little bit gnarly level for me, and also the I have not prepped for water types just yet. So uh, instead, I think the probably the best thing is let's go back up to Morville City, I guess. Uh, did you like how, uh, Kipperoni did not evolve, by the way? Maybe I got the level wrong. I thought it was 32 off the top of my head, it might be 36. I've seen Ant streams, uh, or two videos where a streamer Gen 1 vs. Mode, uh, Old World Pokemon Champion for its AI trainer in Gen 1. I feel like I've seen something like that before. I've still got one up front. Good old Reebok. Good old Reeboks. 
That's a that was a legendary move. That was I'm I'm putting that one in my my history books. I swear I was like super unlucky last stream just in general and not even just with the ninja thing, but just like the whole stream train wreck. And now it's just like yeah, no, it's fairly okay. No, I should check it. It's actually so good. It's been a while since I've caught like a, a Pokemon YouTuber, and I should really like tune back in just to kind of see like what's the what's the reactions to things, what's the things that people are doing. Because I'm playing the game through quite casually, and it's been a couple of years since I played, you know, uh, third gen Pokemon for uh, just a couple of years, not too many years. So anyway, back up to the top, across the way is a bit. Did I plant like things like right here? I forgot where I planted stuff. I won't spoil it, but imagine if the AI trainer were controlled by real humans. Oh, that actually pulled like smart moves once. So I gotta go all the way back to Morville City. I know, right? You gotta, you gotta just. Oh, I'm an idiot. Why am I going this whole way? I, I can't. You know, I, I'm not gonna abort which way I was going, but I just, just for no, I'm an idiot. The strat should have been to not condition. Oops. The strat should have been beat the gym and then just go. Right, up, right, up, instead of going through the forest again. I don't think that's really a wrong way to go, and it's not like I'm going to be missing any trainers on the way. But I should have taken a, a better straight route, I should have gone for that, so. Uh, I got a couple of, uh, ooh. And there's a couple of things to do on the way, I guess. I'm not sure if I'd hit a city uh, by the end of the stream, but I definitely have one thing that I want to at least accomplish. Maybe two things. There's a lot of trainers on the way. And best part, a lot of bug types. Finally, finally, <laughs> some Pokemon to feed off of. No more level 7 Wizmas. I'm not, not fighting them. turning in place all the time. You know, I guess I'm still enjoying this game quite a bit. Um, definitely, like, that kind of back-to-back -back gym. I always find, like, it's kind of strange the, um, the perceived pacing of a Pokemon game because it's like, you know, you consider the eight gym challenges and then you fight the, you know, the, the champion, basically. You go up for that. But in this game, this one started to, you know, add a little bit more story, but only a little bit. We've still done the fight with, you know, Archie. We've done that, and come across them before but right now it's like well I'm doing a gym challenge and they're just like there I guess we'll definitely see more of them maybe soon maybe look at this fella the gym <laughs> he's just chilling out here oh being there you look like you have a lot of zip that's a good thing <laughs> fine I've decided I need a favor being there oh okay sure Morville City has an underground sector called New Morville. Uh, sure. You know, I'd like you to go there and switch off the generator. The generator has been running a bit haywire. It's getting unsafe. Here, this is the key to get into New Morville. Oh, yeah. Cool. Don't you worry, it's the basement key, by the way. The entrance to New Morville is just a short surf away from Grump 110. See ya. So, this is a, like, I don't even think you have to do this, but, uh, Definitely, I don't have a surfing Pokemon just yet. Or rather, I haven't taught surf. Have I been teaching the other HMs? Like, I, I've not listed strength on any of my Pokemon, but I kind of feel like maybe I should just teach strength. Just so I can, um... Yeah, because I got other moves. Hold on, like, let, let me just look at... Because I know, I know, uh, Marshop can learn strength. And I feel like... Well, you know, takedown is just... I feel like strength is the better move here. I'm definitely going to get rid of Growl and Mudshot, and I feel like by the time I want to open up having strength... You accept Mario? Oh, true, true. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to use strength instead of takedown. Well, I will move strength. I will change the attack at some point. Um, the other thing I want to do is... Uh, well, we've got Rock Smash on, on uh, Zigzagoon. Let's teach Surf. Zigzagoon can learn Surf, but I'm also thinking Surf is kind of de facto the move that you should be putting on uh, 
you know, your water type. So, let's get that. This will at least make Kipperoni a much more formidable uh, thing to go up against. So yeah, uh, when he says it's a short hop, skip, and a jump, he actually means it. Like, you go surfing right here, and you just go, r like, actually right, and then you find out that uh, there's surfing Pokemon. Oh, also, yeah, there's surfing Pokemon, I guess. So as you're surfing, you'll probably come across uh, water types. Some of them are oh, nice. Um, some of them can actually be level 30 at this point. So uh, this tentacle is nice and level 20. And not using any water type attacks. But I've made a terrible mistake by going in with my slow Pokemon. Oh no, oh no. Oh no. Hentai just means fan club. Big, big fan club. I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of Tentacle. There's the place. It wasn't that bad. I don't think I'm going to be able to run away from many of these fights anyway, so, uh... Good going with... Mm, I'll go with Sedimentai. We'll just see how far we get with him. I'm not really going to, like, switch out, so... Uh... So anyway, here is... New Morville. The door is closed, but I've got the basement key. And the door opened. Uh, so this is a fun little place. You made it work. Oh, <laughs> I, I make things so much worse. Uh, this place is filled with Voltorbs. The level uh, 22 to 26. I'm going to see if I can just take out some Voltorbs. Otherwise, I'm just going to be running away. But I'm pretty sure Sedimenta could get some decent experience off them, as long as they don't keep Sonic Blue Moon. So, welcome to the Undertale Secret Lab. Yeah, it's gonna get Sonic Boom to the extremes, isn't he? It might be okay to level up, but sure. Uh, this is a puzzly place. You gotta press the buttons and puzzle your way through the place. Magnemite, don't take me out with a Sonic Boom. Oh, I'm faster now. Oh. I don't think I'm gone anyways. Yeah, oh, crit every time. Uh, sure, Rebox. Sure, get in there, Rebox. So, uh, yeah, so New Morville has, um, pretty much, I don't think I'm going. Oh, actually, uh, yeah, I forgot the, like, <laughs> You don't deal too much damage, but that's a bit. Um, yeah, okay, okay. I'm, I'm realizing it now. So, uh, yeah, this place is filled with Voltorbs and Magnemites, level 22 to level 26. Uh, but there's a little bit of a chance, and you're very lucky if you find these. You can actually find Electrodes and Magnetons just right there. I'm not even gonna bother. It's just, it's just these guys for a bit. Oh boy, but the game is gonna make me bother. It's really gonna make me bother, isn't it? So it's really gonna make me bother. Well, this would take forever if I uh, fought all these guys, I guess. Monogram's gotta get the experience somehow, but there's also like a ton of trainers that are actually like I'm not even joking. These trainers are like level like 26. Well, I guess that's not actually too bad, given that Slugma's still like level 23, isn't it? Yeah. Uh. Oh my goodness! Is the encounter rate really that bad in this place? So I think the pattern is is that different door switches are controlled by different um, different buttons. So you'll see there's a blue door there, there's a blue switch there, and I'll pop out the blue switch and uh, make it so that all the green switch doors are now open. So I think, if you keep going around, this door is open and you'll find this item. It's an Ultra Ball, nice. Uh, I'm not too sure if there's something back at the no, that's just the start now. We're back at the start. There's a few items to get. One is uh, important, but I also don't think it's um, like hidden in any way. And this isn't like too long a dungeon, because it is just this one floor. Um, and they gave you the, the escape rope already, so you can avoid having to fight Voltorbs and stuff all the time. 
I think, yeah, when I did my run and I was, like, trying to get all the, uh, the Pokemon that are in every generation, um, this would be the last one, getting a Magnemite here. Uh, so I think, I think there's an item to my right. I think. Um, but I'm pretty sure, like, what was the other one? Wingull? Oh, Absol is later. We haven't seen Absol yet as a catchable Pokemon. There you go. Uh, we've seen Nosepass. We've seen, uh, Zubat. Have we seen Psyduck? I don't know if you, you could have gotten Psyduck yet. Might have been an Emerald thing. Oh no, this is, uh, this is actually a Voltorb. They got you there. They got you on the Voltorb. The preset Voltorb is a level 25. There's not much to them, other than the Voltorb. Is he no Thundershock? We'll see. Yeah, that's a good hit. That's a good go. Oh, wait, well, he knows Spark, which isn't really any better. Of course. Of course he's paralyzed. Can he use Sonic Boom? Who knows? Well, that's what I get for... Ah! Oh! What's the phrase? If I was having, like, if I wasn't having bad luck, I'd have no luck. I don't even gain anything really by fighting this thing, but man, you know. Well, I've got strength, I guess. And I'm slow enough. Well, Voltorb's fast, so. That's the one catch, is that when you're going through this place, the Voltorbs are speedy. And my speedy Pokemon that could run away from everything is uh, now dead. So, nice. Well, and so is Slugma. <laughs> so I think uh, we just keep going left, I guess. And now I'm gonna feel the feel the pain of not being able to run away from the Voltorbs. This probably catches out people, like just realizing that they're too slow to run away from things. But yeah, I do like Magnemite. Magnemite's a good fun Pokemon to use in the single player. That was a Parlor's Heal. I'm pretty sure the uh this one's a Voltorb. Maybe. <laughs> Alright, have a good one, Mr. Crip. Have a good one. So good old Voltorb chilling here. Uh not much to say really. I guess I can use Surf. I feel like strength does more damage though. Because uh physical attack. Yeah. I got the funny number for my health. Uh I do wish there were maybe uh fewer encounters going on there though. I, it feels like I'm just tripping up on one every like two seconds. Should be able to ride my bike around here, you know? And then he finds out that I'm ground type. So... I think I also, I, I, when I was talking about the, oh, whoops. When I was talking about the, um, the, the bad games, I guess I should also mention the, uh, the, uh, the new Lord of the Rings Golem game. I personally do not know anything about this game. Um, at all. Like, actually anything. I remember they showed it off, uh, like a teaser. It might have been at the Game Awards, or it might have been at an E3. Um, also, E3 is... It's not coming up soon, because it's cancelled, but uh, the sentiment of E3 is coming up soon. Um, the period in June where people will probably announce a bunch of games, and I know Sony announced a bunch of stuff that I haven't been paying attention to, so I don't know what exactly they announced. Um, so whoops. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I remember they showed it off, and for some odd reason in my head, I thought this was going to be a Lord of the Rings tower defense game, sort of like Orcs Must Die, where it's a... It is a tower defense, you build up things and you try and, you know, have your towers destroy the enemies, but you also get to do a bit of combat in the middle. Um, I'm not too sure what exactly kind of combat Gollum would be doing 
um, as a Lord of the Rings character, but I thought, hey, you know what? That's an interesting idea. And then it <laughs> turns out it's, uh, um, I think inevitably it is kind of just like, imagine Tomb Raider basically, like Tomb Raider 2013, where you go around and you do some set piece things and then you do a little bit of like kind of janky combat here and there and call it a day. And I'm like, is that really? Or is that really what they were going for? But turns out the execution was so much more worse. Uh, was so much worse because they, uh, well, it, it runs like trash. It uh, looks like a PS3 game. It has some really weird bugs all over the place, and it doesn't seem like it was a particularly great idea to begin with. Uh, the quad factor of you know things going wrong in uh, game dev. Also, there's a thunderstone here, which is very nice for them to give. Step on a switch because, of course, it's powered by a step switch, foot switch, and the generator turns off. Which obviously means that the wild Pokemon have stopped. Well, so now I gotta wander all the way back. Actually, I'm, I'm gonna burn an escape rope on this because this is a pacing killer right here. I, I will tell you that there's a horrendous amount of... Uh, of stall. Side note as well, I actually kind of want to demonstrate one thing. And me going the wrong way kind of prevented me from finding the one thing. So I'm going to uh, just casually pull out the Mark bike again. Let's register that. I'm going to go all the way down to Odale Town because I really wanted to try out this one thing. I've never personally done this, but I've seen it. And I swear it should be very easy to pull off. But I just thought it'd be hilarious, because otherwise then I'm gonna forget it. Thank you for telling me that I am too fast for my own good. Uh, but yeah, Odell Down isn't too far away, but... I know, the next gym gives you fly, I know. I need a flying-type Pokemon soon, don't I? Yeah, I should probably catch a Taylor at some point. I'm gonna catch one now. <laughs> probably is the best time to catch one, just right now. Just so I got something I can fly when I need it. Okay, so here's the fun thing. First of all, I'm gonna go into the PC. I'm gonna take out enough items. Uh, so, first of all, let's go to my PC. Uh, item storage. I'm gonna make sure I don't have potions. That's very important. No one cares about potions anymore. Now I'm going to withdraw other random items. Pretty much. I have no more room in my bag. Okay, sure. And if I've done this right, I'm just going to say just so that I don't, like, permanently not do this. But I want to see if I can show this off, because it'd be kind of funny. I shall now demonstrate a glitch. This is a fun little glitch. Uh, I'm not too sure if it has the, uh, what the name of it was. But talk to this person. They work at the Pokemon Mart. Now, I ignored this person initially, initially, so they're going to tell me where the Pokemon is. Okay, and they'd like to give me an item, but the bag is full, and they proceed to not give you the item. That item would be a potion. Now, usually when you start the game, this is never an issue, but it's a fun little thing that they don't um, give you the potion. Now, you can talk to them, and they will just tell you that a potion can be used for this. If you step here, you'll be in the next route, but walk back in, they haven't despawned, and they will give you the tutorial again, and they will proceed to just walk right into the, right into the, um, the trees here, and then proceed to tell you the bag is full. Now, you can not walk up or <laughs> right, but you can walk out, uh, but they will just casually be standing there, um, I assume, in theory, they'll be able to, you know, you can keep talking to them and keep pushing them up north, and I'm not too sure what would happen if you keep going too far north. Um, but in practice, you can't talk to this person after that. And if you go far away enough, they fix their location. They, they're they not permanently stuck. But it is a hilariously fun glitch that just so happens to work. And I just wanted to go all the way here just to show that off. But I thought it'd be funny, so... Uh, what are some items I don't need? Well, I probably don't need the protein. I don't need the moonstone. And I can keep the heart scales on the, on the back burner. And I don't really know why I'm using the black glasses and HP up. And we'll save the red candies for later. And I will probably keep the nuggets for a little bit later. 
And uh, the Stardust also is something you sell in the Thunderstone, and I'm probably not going to be using the X Defend on the X Special. There we go. Saved a bunch of inventory space. Yes, I spent all the time just to just to go over there, but it's worth it. It was worth it. Uh, and I need to catch a Taylor. Or a Wingo. I think Wingo can fly. Right? This is not Wingo, though. This is still not Wingo. Pretty sure you can get Wingo here, right? This is 103. Come on, Wingo. Where you at? There you are. My boy. My pride, my joy, for Wingo. Uh, let us realize I didn't send anyone for, for healing, but that's okay, because I got Brushy. I got a weak, weaker Pokemon here. But this is level 3 Wingo, so, uh, let's go in with the fighting type attack that hopefully shouldn't kill him. Okay, it's a bit too weak. Uh, I feel like Cut will kill him. Dang it. Yeah. Do it. We'll, no, we'll do another stab. Get another Wingo coming at me. There he is. Is he higher level? No, he's still level 3. Oh well, I'll we'll accept it. Uh, yeah, I just need a Pokemon that will no, no fly later on. That's pretty much it. There's no there's no science to me catching a Wingo, but since I don't have anything that could no fly, I'm gonna get very caught out. I think, I think when I first played this game, I caught a, a Tropius. Hold on, yeah, there's... Would Headbutt do- yeah, Headbutt does more damage than Cut, right? Yeah. Really, I should just be using Tail Whip and kind of dealing a bit more damage. It's because Rock Smash does really no damage and not very effective. Headbutt has more accuracy. Uh, it can stun, yeah, but I don't want to kill the Wingo because I. Oh, this is going to be scrambling me, so I just want to weaken it a bit so I can catch it. That butt's a good attack, though. People sleep on it, but there's a lot of, like, really good normal type attacks. Um, I think the reason why people sleep on it is because uh, Return is probably the normal type attack of choice. Uh, or um, I'm pretty favorable to Body Slam as, like, a pretty good one because Paralyzing is really nice if you can. You need to train brushes for the balls, otherwise it's not the perfect HM slave. What move does it miss out on? Oh, because it, it learns strength when it evolves, doesn't it? But it can't right now. Yeah, that's actually a good that is a good um, good catch. I think uh What do I have here? Yeah. There's a level body slam is also strength. Oh yeah, 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 exactly. Exactly, yeah. So I'm not, I'm not going to need to use Wingull just yet, but I thought, well, might as well have the Wingull. The water has died blue. They, they, they poured, uh, they poured dye into the, uh, that one bridge under Venice. I swear, that, that happened recently. Oh, this tentacle's level 32. This tentacle is the same level as my marsh top. I hate that you can find level 35 Pokemon in the surf, like, after in the gym. It's crazy. The other, oh my gosh. The other strong uh, normal type attacks either have uh, terrible accuracy, a few uses. Yeah, or there's stuff like Hyper Beam. And it's just like, yeah, like, you know, 5 PP and you miss. Oh, not you miss. Um, you uh, you can't attack. Similar to Slack Off. That's actually a fun strat with Slack Off, by the way, if uh, anyone ever uses, um, or Slacking. Is, uh, he, um... Uh, his, you can basically just use Hyper Beam, and the turn that he has resting is also the turn that Hyper Beam rests. So it's kind of like, well, you, you didn't really waste a turn, you just kind of were already going to do that. Especially if you look at Gen 1, it's clear there is a certain tiers of attacks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, um, like Psychic compared to Psy, uh, Psy Beam. 
Oh, hi there, old man. I've got your power turned off. Wahaha, I knew it, Bando. I knew I'd make the right choice asking you. This is my thanks, a TM containing Thunderbolt. And the best here, IMO, is a strength 9500, accuracy 15 years. Yeah, exactly. Moves like Thunderbolt, move. Well, there you go. Thunderbolt is one of those moves. Flamethrower is one. Um, Surf's one, I guess. Yeah, Ice Beam, yeah. I've got in my, like, list of intended Pokemon, I actually have Hyper Beam written down twice, and I somewhat feel that Hyper Beam is overkill. Fly doesn't do that much damage, I think Fly is 65. And Fly takes two turns, which is not fun. Um, Hyper Beam is a special, but right now it's technically, uh, physical. So, I get to, I get to rock this one. Oh yeah, I forgot trainers. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple of trainers here I never fought back in the day. But yeah, since this is actually the way to go now. East. East, my lad. Oh, I still gotta keep running out front, dang it. The one the one Pokemon that like uh sedimental probably should be there. Uh it was a tone category move that other Oh yeah, sorry, yeah, as as in it was special because it's yeah, it's a it's a great attack. Um and yeah, the like what have they got now? They got Giga Impact, what's another one? Um it's like strong and then you gotta wait. Solar Beam is sort of like that. Sort of. It's a diff it plays a little differently, but it's that idea of... Yeah, yeah, Um... How little, how little experience he gets off like some of these guys. So, I'm gonna sort of try my best. There's a certain landmark location that I want to get to before the end of this stream. And it does involve going through some routes and fighting a bunch of trainers. Uh, and there is a healing spot somewhere on the way. I'll just say that. And Sedimento got paralyzed, which means you know this is gonna be absolutely annoying to, to continue using him without just backing up to the, to the healing. I'm gonna try my best once I cross the river. Nurse Joy just constantly, constantly feeling me level up here. Oh, sorry. Constantly healing me. Lie, I can talk. My s I feel like I need to try the better. I feel like some of these Pokemon streams I just go, I am going to mildly narrate the very first thing that comes to my head. But sometimes I do feel a little um, short on content at times. Like, I'm talking about the Golem game, and I'm like, I haven't played it. I don't, I don't really know much about it. Um, the best I can say is maybe I can talk about the, uh... Did I just switch to... Did I just switch to... to... Slugma, and then it's just like, yeah, he's got Carvana. Which is not really Slugma's favorite thing to be taking out, so... Um... Let's go with Riff Raff. Who's rock type? I know. Rage! He's very angry. Um I no, I Oh, okay, come on. Now he's angry. Yeah, oh, okay. Okay, come on. I thought, I thought I didn't really plan this one out, but apparently I do. I mean, I got the attack set, so that shouldn't be too bad. That's beating him hard, I guess. I guess so, I guess. So all three of these trainers are technically there before you even fight the third gym. Like, the moment you arrive in Morville, you can just head out east. Uh, but it's really only three trainers, and I was like, eh, I'll fight them later. Uh, but yeah, no, I definitely want to try, uh, like, some of the topics I've come up with, I've, I've been a little bit weaker <laughs> describing those topics, and I'd really like to, to keep trying on it, and, um, because yeah, the original idea for the streams was to, um, take it as, like, a bit of a podcasting format, so I'd have a couple of topics and I'd have a couple of just notes and I'd read through them, but, uh, I, I hope you can hear the difference in my, uh, I guess my approach when it's something that I'm very confident on, or something that I strongly feel, um, 
And then when it's like something I'm very um and er about, it's like, it's so obvious. I, I feel it's very obvious. And I want to try and... I guess... I guess in my mind I wasn't really thinking about <laughs> some of those things I was saying before too much as well, so... I don't know, I probably got some things I, I said, I was like, eh, if I listen back to them, I really... Do I really feel that way? I don't know. So, this guy, 100% has a Carvana. I'm going with the... See, my sixth pick on my team would probably take this guy out, but let's get let's get Ninjask out because the moment Ninjask gets the oh wait, this guy gives you a good rod. Sick, nice. Okay, cool. So the good rod, uh, I don't think it changes the encounters you find, but the old rod would only get you Pokemon up to you know level ten, levels five to ten. The uh, good rod gets you uh, up to level uh, thirty, but you're still gonna find magic ups and tentacles for most of the game. Oh, you've been a high, do you remember us from last time? Can you show us how much stronger you become? I've lost count of the double battles, but I'm pretty sure I only did one last stream. So this was like five, and I'm pretty sure this pair of trainers was the, uh... Was one of them, so... Uh, yes, you you may have seen just then, uh... Rip Raff, since he was a, a fossil Pokemon, he's only gonna be, um... You know, in a Pokeball, basically. He's howling. Cause they had a Wisma earlier, didn't they? The Loudra definitely will start kind of, you know, being a bit mean. Actually, I, yeah, I remember Wisma and Loudra, and then eventually it's the evolution of Xcloud. Um, yeah, they were going to be like some fun ones, like. So could have used on my team, but I wasn't 100% confident in, uh, you know, using them. The sound base attacks is, uh, a bit, you know, interesting to go off. Oh no, Riff Raff! Whoa! That was a quickie. That was a quick, you know, pop off of your health. And that Magmite is still alive. Some attacks do hit multiple Pokemon, and I'm going to switch over to doing that. There we go. Psybeam, the Loud Rid. It should take off lots more of its health. Oh, own tempo. Own te and then it gets another wave anyways. Uh, but yeah, so I guess for reference, this is Route 118. Um, there's no grass on the, uh, on the side before the water. Uh, but once you're across the water, uh, there's going to be a little bit of grass. I don't think any of these... Oh, actually, one of these is new. Uh, so you can get Zigzagoon. I know, right? It's still Zigzagoon. But you might find Lanoon, so level uh, 10. There are Wingulls here, which makes me sort of scratch my head why I caught a Wingull earlier. Um, there's also Electrikes and Manectrix. Again, same thing. 30% chance on the, uh, the base, the, the basic Pokemon, and then the evolution has a 10% chance. And there is a 1% chance to find a Kecleon. Pushover. Do you remember? That's the quote you gave us last time. I never ever forget stuff like that. Because I insulted you to your face. No, I don't want to be interviewed again. Don't give up. Just put him down. I don't need him. Um. Yeah, okay, sure. On the ground. You get to go. You know, I'm just going to be fighting another person here. I am a fisherman, but also a trainer. I'm raising the Pokemon I caught. Cool. I think I'll do my taxes. <laughs> And his name's Barney. That's a very tax doer name, isn't it? Okay, um, I'm gonna sword dance this one. I'm gonna prep this one. I'm finally using sword dance once. Oh, he's focusing. He's getting pumped. Oh dang! I know, rough skin, but I got this. I got this. He's level 29 now, so that's good. So, I guess one game... Usually I'd, I'd kind of do a bit of a topic where it's like, Oh, here are the games I played this week, but... Real talk, I've been kind of wasting my time a fair bit. Um, because I've been playing through the... Uh, the Marvel Avengers game. I know I said, uh, I think I talked about it, not last week, but the week before, and I basically said how kind of like buggy and average it is. But I want to kind of 
reiterate now and kind of reflect, because I am currently at this point, I have 49 out of 50 achievements on Steam. Uh, the only one I don't have involves leveling up the factions to reach rank 25 with one of them. Um, and this game, as I went through it, as I started, as I started to experience the post-game, oh my gosh, hi there. Hi, you're that trainer I met in Duford. Oh, okay, you've been there. I remember it. I didn't remember it before. You know, in this vast world, there are many kinds of Pokemon. They come in many types. Do you raise different types? I guess. Do you raise only Pokemon of a certain type? What do you think as a trainer? Sorry, it's not my place to ask, is it? Well, anyway, I hope to see you again. Yeah. Look at this cut tree. You might not have cut anymore. You're missing out on these citrus berries. Citrus berries are the overpowered berries, by the way. I don't know why it, it irritates me so much. Citrus berries heal 30 health, which doesn't sound like much, but when that kicks in sometime in the middle of a fight, it sometimes actually saves you butt quite a fair bit. Also, I think this, uh, this, this doesn't even skip the trainer. There's an electric. Cool. Uh, what have I got up front? Monogram. Monogram. Well, might as well go up. We'll come back for some of Take flight, my bird Pokemon! Um, so as I've been playing this Avengers game, I'm now in this opinion where I will go... I've never played... Okay, for reference, I've never really played one of these looter-style games. The ones where, which are like this, where um, the main goal is to really play the game with friends in... Oh, this is gonna hurt. This, one, this is going to be an interesting pop-off, or I'll miss one of the two. Okay, alright. Okay. Okay, we're good, we're good. Um, some people are probably going to be irritated by how many times I didn't use sword stands. I would just <laughs> go in with using furious swipes when it would deal no damage. I'm starting to correct that. Ah, oh, I got quick attacked. That's a swallow strat. That is a swallow strat right there. Um, but yeah, I've never really played one of these, um, one of these, uh, looter style games where, yeah, the main point is really just to be playing the game with the friends, but they do encourage you to, you know, constantly be working your way up with higher level loot and all that stuff until you eventually, uh, take on, you know, raids and things like that. Um, but I feel like this game gave me the worst possible impression of what these kinds of games are like. And I'll, I'll kind of let you in on like how this whole game took place, so I'm gonna go back there as well. I know I said I wouldn't do it if I crossed the river, but I feel like I've got like an awkward number of trainers in front of me. And there's a Linoon. And I've got Sentimenta, who's not gonna be able to escape and is probably gonna get taken out. Dang it, Sentimenta. Dang it. So. This game was broken down into a handful of categories. I think I was probably, two weeks ago, I was probably most of the way through the campaign. Um, I'm not too sure if my thoughts still stand. I really can't remember what my opinions were two weeks ago. But now, uh, after going through it, I thought it was really um, misleading. The game led me on to believe that it would be this wonderful, not wonderful, but like at least this, you know, in the same way as Tomb Raider, a single player with these cutscenes and these set piece moments and you keep going from location to location and doing cool things, but eventually you'd be interrupted three hours in, by the way, after quite a fair bit of not repeat locations, uh, you'd be interrupted by doing a, um, uh, I'd sometimes refer to it as a randomly generated mission, but I've learned that these are not randomly generated. You'd have to do a mission from the mission select screen. And the missions, I then eventually found out, were all very identical to each other. A lot of them would take place in very similar environments. Um, like it's the same layout of, you know, of, of a location over and over again. Um, but like maybe there's a different objective. Um, it felt very aimless compared to the, oh, it's a no-go. The tall grass snares bike tires. There's no way you could cycle here. So yeah, this is a no bike. Also, it starts raining, and there's trainers all over the place who are dancing all over the place and telling you to if they turn, you'll turn as well. Oh my gosh, interesting. 
I like how the backdrop keeps changing, by the way. It's kind of cool. So, um, but yeah, this mission just didn't feel that very, that very good. Good thing that it cut into, you know, a more regular style level. You know, set piece, set moments, you know, unique visuals, that kind of stuff. Uh, and then it would kind of cut back into another one of these missions. And uh, I eventually learned that the missions were eventually what the post-game would basically be. Uh, these set, you know, missions that take place in these wider environments. Uh, they're not exactly open world and generally they're a bit linear in some cases as well. Um, but they sometimes stretch out in some directions and there might be a building somewhere where it's like, Oh look, there's a hidden loot box there. Eventually, after doing enough of those, you learn the tools of the trade. Um, you know exactly what the game is really pulling on you. Um, and that makes it a bit of a, you know, more dull and bland experience as you go along. Um, it's not like the absolute worst, but uh, it's definitely disappointing when the single player has those moments when there is a set piece that does kind of ring with you at least a little bit, or it's something interesting. And then you cut into this very generic gameplay where I'm just fighting a bunch of robots and then a little bit of, like, narrated dialogue tells me that I've done a good job. I don't really know that I'm doing a good job if I had the audio off. I just fought a bunch of robots and then it said, Mission complete. I stood next to a panel for a bit. Uh, sometimes there was a bigger robot, like a sort of boss robot. Um, but I felt that, the, you know, the grunt robots had... You know, a good amount of health, sure. But as the robots got tougher, it was like, man, you know, these are just bullet sponges. These are just taking a bunch of my hits. Um, and I didn't really feel very rewarded for fighting a bunch of those. There's a lot of trainers in this round, by the way, so I've still got a bit of time to, to keep going. Oh, Sedimenter, no. Dang it, Sedimenter. Well. With the rebox. I know I could probably also use um, Riff Raff, but I want to go with rebox on this one. This is poison type. It's funny. <laughs> Good old Moonlight, by the way. Just everyone's sleeper healing move right here. Um. So anyway, so back to the, the single player, um, eventually I started to think, huh, I found, you know, you start off as Miss Marvel, you'll find Hulk very quickly, um, Iron Man is there kind of quickly, and then for a while it's like you're just doing some weird side missions here and there, like it doesn't feel like you're getting anywhere. Suddenly Miss Marvel then goes, I want to, I, what is it, someone got captured, and I want to rescue them, and then everyone was like, don't. You're, like, we, we're planning a raid, and she goes in anyways. Anyway, um, uh, Black Widow is like, Hey, I'm gonna show up out of nowhere because this kid is in trouble. And, and then saves the day, and also discovers all the lost secrets of, um, not lost secrets, but like a, bu a bunch of, like, secret things. Uh, there's some boss fights sprinkled in here and there, but after a while, all of them feel very kind of spongy as well. I had this huge trouble on a, the Abomination fight, um, but after going through the post game, it's like, man, you know, all the bosses just feel like the same thing over and over again, uh, which is attack them, attack them, attack them. Oh, look, they're flashing red, which means they're about to hit you with a, um, you know, with a with an undodgeable attack. Oh my goodness, what's going on here? What about a cave called the Cave of Origin? People rumor that the spirits of Pokemon are revived there. Could something like that really happen? I thought off the top of my head this would be a healing place, but... Oh no! Wish I'd known about that a long time ago. Oh man, I thought you healed here. Wait, hold on, yeah, I thought you do heal there. Hold on. Am I going insane? I swear this was a healing stop, just because there's like ten trainers on the way here. Hold on, I, am I am I wrong? You're just supposed to say hi again. No, you're gonna tell me about the cave of origin. Really? Man, I thought that was the other way. 
also tall grass here. Uh, also, I might as well read out the tall. Interesting how the English name goes for raccoon. Uh, the German one goes for badger. Yeah, it's kind of funny that sometimes a uh, Pokemon name changes its species. This guy's gonna fight me regardless. Uh, there's a lot of Pokemon in, this, um, in that route. Not, not actually, not a lot, but uh, you've got Oddish. Good chance for that. Zigzagoon and Linoon are still there, although much more chance of a Linoon than before. Uh, still Kecleon, 1% chance, and you'll also find a Tropius, um, which has a 9% chance. Tropius is a very interesting grass flying type. It actually knows why, or learns why. Ah, oh, I'm getting hit with a wing attack. Oh, that's not too bad. Um, interestingly as well, uh, this uh, is the one route where also, when surfing, you can find Palpa. Um, but this is the one route you can find Feebas, which has a very fun uh, kind of concept of how that Pokemon is found. Uh, basically, there is a river, uh, you know, there's a bunch of squares you can stand on. Six of those squares determined randomly, I think, is it every day? It'll randomly, like, just when you play the game, it'll randomly pick six squares. Those will be special squares. I think, is this... Is this where I want to go? I don't think this is exact. Oh, maybe. <laughs> I've completely forgotten this area, I'll tell you that. Is this a rest stop? No, this is the Berry Master's house. You're a master of berries, dang it. <laughs> Who's got the rest stop? I've forgotten where the rest stop is. Well, at least I got Fury Cut up, so. Lots of trainers all around, I'll tell you that, though. Um, anyway, yeah, so, eventually, at some point later in the game, you get captured and Black Widow just shows up. And then, immediately afterwards, the, the airship that you're on gets attacked, and suddenly Thor shows up, and then Everyone gets angry because they think that they're the problems in the world when really, you know, there's giant robots that just attacked you. So people go their own ways, including Thor, who literally showed up for a hot moment. Uh, then Miss Marvel brings the gang back together. Oh. Miss <laughs> um, Marvel brings the gang back together, and then they go and find Captain America, who is on a space satellite. Um, and then, uh,. I feel like I'm gonna get killed. Just in general. Oh, especially when my defense falls. Um, and then you just you get told, oh, we're now going to go and fight Modok. But Modok is uh Okay. Modok is uh you know on uh well, we need some resources to fight him, and then and then I managed to get the resources in one mission. And it was just another one of those, like, just, I picked a mission, and I just started getting, like, materials, and then eventually I, I fought him, so. Two more levels and you get good attack. Yeah, oh, dude, I am longing for that attack. I am longing for that. Good old Riff Raff. Reloom. Am I gonna get my butt kicked? Mm. We'll see how we go, we'll see how we go. Slash do be good. Slash is actually, um, like, one of the moves I, I wrote on Ninjask. Sword Stance was another one. I've still got Double Team there, actually, as well. Uh, but Slash is, like, the attack I want to use on him. Crack Punch is, uh, like, Quick Attack, except Fighting type, I believe. So it's a priority move. Um, oh, I'm getting the seed. In Gen 3, it's the last attack that is useful for you to learn, yeah. It's not the last attack for me. Ah, you spoiled it! Actually, agility is not the one. I'm not gonna spam agility. Because it's... I mean, if I'm just using... Um... Because you only need to be, like, somewhat fast, so you don't really need agility. If that makes sense. I think agility is probably a bit too overkill. But Tom Pass is the fourth move I wanted to teach him. <laughs> yeah. Which would be a, such a meme. Such a meme. Because then, there's my sword stance speed set up on anyone else in my party. Yeah, exactly. You don't, you don't need agility. Um, like, it'd be nice if you needed to, like, really one turn throw a bunch of speed at another Pokemon with Baton Pass, but, um, 
For single player, probably not. You're probably already faster than most things because you got the effort values. Man, this brown is really kind of being a bit obnoxious, but sure, okay. Yeah, I thought Marshop evolved at level 36, by the way. Could have learned Metal Core by not letting it evolve until level 38, by the way. Uh, you could have. What, Ninjas? Sorry? Ninjas would have learned Metal Core. Yeah, you could have, but I feel like eh, for Tom Pass, it, um, double team. Double team is my weird, like, kind of maybe move. I don't know if double team is really quite what I want, but sure. Um, Swords Dance and uh, then um, Flash, Baton Pass, Swords Dance, Double Team. That's, that's the moveset. Yeah. So anyway, so you find Captain America on the moon, and then yeah, you find the materials to fight MODOK, and then you just fight MODOK, and then the game is done. And I was like, oh, that was it. Like, I mean, I know it was like, oh, okay, I'm building up to the final boss, but it, it just kind of... It was interspersed with too many... I had to pick the missions from the post-game, I guess. Or rather, like, yeah, these extra missions. You can teach it secret power. Maybe. Maybe. I'm just gonna get caught out with Sedimenta, like, being slower than everything else. Like, I'm like, oh, you know, Sedimenta... You know, he's lost... Moo says, what nerfs this Pokemon? Yeah. It's the first grass. That was the first grass on the way. And of course, he's slower than Wingull. This is what I get, I guess, for just throwing... <laughs> ah. I want him to get experience, but hold on, where's the experience share in this game? It's actually good because of that strength 60 bug type. Where is the experience share in this game? Have I just like walked past it right now? Oh, I have! I have walked past it. I'm an idiot. I'm actually an idiot. Do I go back for it? I'm going back for it. <laughs> This is vital. This is actually, like, super vital. Yeah. Okay. I'm an idiot. I'm a super idiot. Because I've been wandering around. I walk through... Um... Yeah. Oh. I walk through the place. I walk through Rustboro City and I didn't even get this. Oh. I didn't even get the experience share. Okay, so where is the experience share? First of all, I'm gonna get on my bike, Sunny Jim. Just go for it. Uh, fortunately, uh, Rustboro is not too far away. But I might hit some wild poke. Yeah, there's one. Um, so yeah, so the single player was a bit disappointing. So I immediately left the single player and started to do um, the DLCs. There were three DLCs released over the course of this game's lifespan. Um, they had to pay for, I think. I have no idea what the monetization model for this game was, to be honest. Uh, because it is just kind of not there in this, uh, current version. There's a plus button where you can attempt to buy currency, but the button does nothing. Um, uh, I think that currency is purely for cosmetics. Still, though, I found the cosmetic currency to be too pricey. There's skins that cost 7,500 of the cosmetic currency. I have earned, like, 37,000 after my, like, 70 hours of whatever gameplay. It's like, that. okay, sure, I can buy five of the skins. Five. So anyway, yeah, I needed to go up to this guy. And he's like, you delivered my letter? Thank you kindly. This is my way of thanking you. I, I should have grabbed this earlier. Because now, someone will be given some experience points. Uh, so how exactly does the uh, experience share work? I think... Um, it will split the experience in half from the, uh, yes. So the, the Pokemon that has the experience share will get half of the experience of, you know, the full Pokemon. Um, this doesn't, I don't think this adds 
any experience that you wouldn't have gotten otherwise. But it's great because now I don't have to keep throwing Slugma out in order to level him up. I can just have an experience share on him. Or even better, I'm gonna have the experience share on Anorith because I know I'm gonna need him in a bit. He's got he's gotta be be a little bit higher level right now, so uh, have that on him, and then uh, I'll keep flicking a nonogram. I think nonogram can still work for a bit. Uh, so yeah, back to the regularly scheduled route 100 and whatever number it's up to. 118. There we go. Back to the dungeon. <laughs> um. So yeah. So. Uh, anyway, so the DLC. The first DLC uh, takes place with uh, a character called Kate Bishop. She is uh, a Hawkeye character, as in there are two Hawkeye characters. I do not know who they are exactly. My knowledge of Marvel superheroes extends to a few of the films, and even then, I don't really know too much beyond that. Kate Bishop, I don't believe, appeared in any of the films. So, okay, sure. Uh, but she has the bow and arrow, and she's a good shot, so therefore she's a Hawkeye, and she wears purple. Um, she's looking for uh, another Hawkeye. This is actually, I think, the one from the films. Well, not from the films, but the same character. Fight me, you fool. The Mimic Circle was formed by people who like to mimic. A battle starts the instant we meet! Oh my gosh. ready to fight oh wait a minute I know you huh. all right well I've got sword sands what do you have what would this guy have oh he's going with the screech okay interesting interesting good thing my speed went up oh no his speed went up as well so uh, the DLC was a bit weird because of course I missed by the way Good thing he doesn't have any better strats than I do, so... Um, but the DLC was kind of interesting because the missions took place in kind of the same fields that you would do the missions from the two times in a row. Two times in a row, I swear. Is this going to happen three times in a row? Is my luck going to do this again? I will miss with Fury, Fury Swipes three times in a row. I've got a level and a half left of having to use Fury Swipes. I just want to be done with it. There we go. Yeah, it worked out in the end. So here you go. Riff Raff is getting some experience in the back, and that would definitely be nice to just kind of keep keep going. Well, let's see what kind of Pokemon I go up against. Oh, there's a Tropius. I like Tropius. Very good fun. He's got Banana Chin going on right there. Uh, so, yeah, the, um, the, the levels seemed, they almost looked like the regular levels from, you know, the, the very throwaway missions, but, um, there were some differences, and the objectives were at least somewhat different, a little bit somewhat different, um, but, uh, yeah, it was a bit, it was a bit moo here and there, it felt like, you know, okay, sure, I was just doing a couple of missions. The nice thing, at least, is that none of the the things I had to do were side missions. I would just keep going on. I would just be like, okay, we've done this mission, now move on to the next mission. Um, like, you'd be picking all the missions from the, the main menu, um, one after the other, so you could stop with your friends if you wanted to stop at any point, but um, at least, like, there wasn't like, oh, we now have to pick a random mission to continue the story. Like, you didn't have any of that. Um, that meant the pacing was a lot better. Um, but that first DLC was a bit weaker. The second DLC followed Hawk Guy. He was like, I'm gonna go to the future to figure out how to stop the Kree aliens. Um, I don't know much about the Kree. All I will say is, uh, well, apparently they killed all the Avengers. So, okay. Uh, so he goes to the future and he finds his future self and decides to keep up this time paradox uh, and just constantly hang out with him. This one started to, you know, take place in a... Um, an actual new environment, the uh, destroyed future world, which sort of just looked like the desert. Actually, was there a desert? Well, it was kind of a desert level, so it kind of just looks like the desert level. 
It's not really too much different about it. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Um, same just as the first DLC, but um, the at least it's a different location, and so I was a lot more okay with where it took me because I hadn't seen this place before, and I was not experiencing levels I've seen uh, before. I was just like, hey, this is new areas. Eventually, then I'd be doing the post-game stuff, and I'd be working around in the um, you know in these areas over and over again. But at least when I'm going through the campaign, hey, it's something new, sure. Um, and then, uh, yeah, other than that, it ended in a real horrendous boss fight against, um, uh, the Maestro, which is the name of Hulk in the future when he just gives up, I guess. Uh, interestingly, as well, in the post-game missions, uh, wild frogs are cool, oh my gosh, hello frogs are cool, how are you doing? Um, interestingly as well, you can fight... Maestro in a post-game mission, and thanks for the follow as well. Um, you can fight him in a post-game mission as Hulk, and he's like, I will defeat, I will kill you. And then if you're Hulk, it's like, wouldn't that be a, a huge paradox? How can he defeat the Hulk if the Hulk has to live to be him later on, you know what I mean? I got the, I got the easy strat right there, but uh, apparently the game didn't think that far, so. Anyway, uh, it ended with, um, uh, Hawkeye find oh my gosh, it's a Volby. How long has it been since I've seen a Volby? Um, it ended with Hawkeye, uh, going, Huh, turns out we are stuffed in the future, and I need to go back into the past in order to stop the Kree from- Or at least, figure out- Figure out how to stop the Kree. Um, and his future self literally goes, Don't make the mistake I did of not joining the Avengers. Now, Obviously, a time paradox is going to be here because him from the future is telling him from the past to not be him from the future. So either split timeline theory, in which case, who cares about the paradoxes, or... I don't know. I don't know. We're making stuff up, so... And that was the end of the DLC. We were looking for a certain character, and we just kind of saw, oh, they screwed up. And that was it. That was how we ended that. The third DLC took place uh, as uh, Black Panther in Wakanda Land. Uh, Wakanda Land was being attacked by um, Claw. Claw is a guy. I know he was played by Andy Serkis in the film. Uh, he turns into sound at the end of the DLC, which apparently I asked my mate. Apparently, it does happen in the in the comic. Oh boy, I'm doing more Fury swipes. Sure. Um, other than that, though, same deal. Different environments, kind of the same enemies. But there was a spider warning when you started the game, because there are some sort of spider enemies, but they're robots. They're all robots. Every enemy in this game is a robot, or a guy in a, you know, in a research suit, basically. He's, he's hazmat investigating, you know, the secrets of technology. Um... I'm gonna miss some, some trainers here. There are, I'm not even joking, like 11 trainers on this route. But I've probably nailed off like most of them, so. I'll rush for the rest of the, the... I forgot they do this. Yeah, I forgot they do that. Um. So, yeah, this was another DLC. Well, the DLC is at least, I liked the pacing a little bit more than the single player, because the single player was too, too haphazard. You had to do all these random missions too often. It was not fun. Um, at least the DLC, you just go through with it. Um, but there wasn't really, you know, they were a bit too short. They were all about three hours long. Um, and kind of awkwardly as well. Um, the side missions were all a bit level gated. I would do the, the levels as a character and then proceed to not be able to do any of the levels uh, or any of the missions, um, the side missions again, because apparently they're just, oh, they're post, they're super post game, your, your character has to have a certain power level. That guy said whoopsie. Uh, oh, there's berries. Also, this is a, this is a, uh, an acro bike moment, you see the little path where they're, we're supposed to use the, um, well, not, not right there, because I'm in a, in a battle, but, uh, that little white pathway that's on the uh, overworld right here. You gotta use the acro bike to hop over. And I do not have that. I didn't even explore like the higher ledge in the desert with the when I've got the Mac bike. 
I'm just stealing the berries and call it a day. I used to do a secret base across the, um, the hop here as well. Because all the secret base rooms have, like, some, like, uh, caved-in, like, parts of the floor. And I'd always find it annoying to walk around the caved-in parts of the floor. And I thought, that spot over there has one of the better places, because it's not in the way. But it's so out of the way, and you need to have the acro bike to get to it. Hi there. Yes, I guess they could. If you're someone on an adventure, you're traveling awfully light. Uh. Uh. At least it's not Catherine with a K. Ooh. And it is raining. Oh, if I had Solar Beam, I swear. That'd be amazing if you had Solar Beam at this point. Um. So, yeah, so that was the, the DLC's done. Ultimately, yeah, okay. You know, it's whatever. And it was pretty whatever in general. I felt like, you know, there was a bit of charm in all the cutscenes and stuff, even in the DLCs, but ultimately, at the end of the day, it's very short, and a lot of the gameplay was very, you know, rinse and repeat. I had to keep fighting the same kinds of robots, go, you know, do similar kinds of objectives by standing in a location for a bit were just fighting big robots and there'd be a boss but the boss just kind of was like dodge him and then you know whatever uh, the batman I, a comparison that i feel like i would make because it is the same kind of like punch enemies and counter or dodge kind of play style mm, i don't know what's going on here i'm getting hit by the uh by the i have no accuracy problem again Oh, snap, I got out Fury Swiped. Well, this is gonna end up tragic in the moment because uh, I don't know if I can get hit two more times. Or one more times. We'll see how this goes. I just feel dead. I just feel dead. Dang it, Nonogram. Sometimes you're wonderful and other times you're just not. Raindrops are falling on my head. Uh, yeah, no, I. Yeah, it was just kind of average to play. Very average. Not horrendous, but average. I fortunately didn't have any crashes. I think I had a couple of like weird bugs. Uh, some things like um, why are you using forest stars? It's just a trainer battle, bro. What are you doing? Um, I had a couple of weird bugs, like some animations would glitch out, and I mentioned the problem I had on the very initial part of the game, when you're on the Brooklyn Bridge, the Golden Gate Bridge, sorry, not the Brooklyn Bridge one, one side of the US, um, where Iron Man started being Hulk, all of a sudden. Um, but in general, um, I didn't have too many glaring issues with the single player. But as I got into the whole post-game scenario, it started to fray more and more. I would, uh, let's just say that, okay, so each of the DLCs introduced another character. There were two other characters that were just there. You could play as the Mighty Thor, i.e. Uh, Jane Foster Thor, probably in promotion of the Thor Love and Thunder film that came out shortly after the game's release. And uh, the, um, uh, the Winter Soldier. He's just there. I think he's got the TV show as well. That's probably why they, they had him. Maybe they had the Hawkeyes because they had the TV shows of that as well. Maybe that's maybe that was the secret for the whole thing. Um, and maybe that's where the other character is. I don't know. I haven't seen the TV shows. Oh, Magical Leaf is a meme attack because this is going to kill me. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm going to do like no damage. Oh, no. This is horrendous. This is a horrendous amount of, like, damage I'm dealing back. Wow. Wow. Uh, so... So, these two characters, these two extra characters, really you just kind of pick them up. In fact, you might actually have already just unlocked them and maybe have been playing with them throughout some of the DLC missions. Um, maybe. Uh, but 
ultimately, they just kind of go, oh, well, here I am, my name is Jane Foster, and I am the Thor, but also there is another Thor, and in my universe there is only one Thor, and I am the Thor, but I've somehow been transported over to this universe, so now you have two Thors with two, you know, hammers, that kind of stuff. It's just like, oh, okay, like, I guess, you know, I guess you're gonna explain it. Magic code, oh boy, magic code. Uh, I don't know if you could predict that. I don't know how easy it is to predict that. Is it worth it over Oda Sleuth? Probably not. Yeah. Uh, but this post game keeps getting more and more worse as I realize it is strong though. Oh, I should relearn it then. I swear, I do swear there was a place where you could heal along the way, because it's just, it's a lot of trainers to get through. I thought it was this hut. It's a special attack version of cat. Oh, okay, okay. That is neat. That is neat to have a special attack version of counter. Did I have it in my, like, move list? You can always second and retaliate with a double strength and every attack. Did I have it in my move list? Maybe I'll hard scale relearn it. So I had both Psy Beam and Psy, uh, Psy Kick, and I don't know if I really need Flick both. We'll see. Um, you yeah, know, might as well just go back and heal. And I might actually call that a streak, because I'm getting a bit sleepy tired. It's already, uh, 11.35, and, uh, you know I'm not pulling another, another Metroid Prime 4-hour stream. <laughs> Um, moral of the story is the Avengers game, as I kept going, the post-game, uh, was more and more grindy. I would be constantly doing the same missions, they'd be giving assignments, which would contextualize maybe doing some- I just realized I have Brushy as the lead of my party right now. Grip Brushy, there he goes. There he goes. Um, uh, but the- the missions would get, um, more and more grindy because some of the assignments, I swear, I've done some of these which are like, do- three, um, you know, uh, boss or villain sector missions, which are, you have to fight a boss, basically, we copy paste the boss. In fact, actually, some of the bosses are like, they're clones of the, you know, the villains you've already fought. And it's like, oh, really? Are we really doing that? Um, and so some of them are like, fight three of them or five of them, and there's only two in the area that you're in, in the, in the, like, section of levels you're doing. So, okay, there's that. Uh, one of them was literally do this one particular mission five times. The same mission, just over and over again. Uh, sure, okay, like, I don't know what's going on there. Um, the... A lot of the missions also were just, like, super quick, like, it was just like, oh, like, fight 30 enemies, um, or, or sorry, the object, the assignment you had to do. So you just do them in one mission, you'd passively be doing them. Um, the... But on top of that, it was the bugs, basically. It was like, I'd have the game occasionally crash, I'd have the game softlock and I would need to load a checkpoint because either I got stuck in the floor, or an enemy got stuck in the floor, or an enemy didn't even spawn, or the enemies did spawn but somehow I didn't consider that I beat them at the end, or sometimes my character would actually get stuck in an animation and would be like flying all around and couldn't do anything because, I don't know, I'm, I'm full on stuck. That would happen probably every hour. And in a, in a 75 hour experience, having that happen 75 times is getting real grating. Um, I actually had some moments as well where it's like once you did a mission, the game would just be stuck in a menu and would not continue at all. Very, very irritating. Um, some of the glitches also involved, uh, just kind of more standard things like character animations moving all about because they had to play the animation somewhere in 3D space. Uh, enemies ragdolling into the ground, enemies, um, uh, multiple objects ragdolling into the ground. I had one point where there were, like, chairs that were supposed to be, like, physics objects, and, and there were 12 chairs all stuck in the ground, all making noise. It was very grating. Um, characters would s not talk in the elevators for the longest time in the game, and suddenly I started experiencing them near the end of the game. It was very strange. Um, the... There'd be so many particles at times that it would actually, like, chug the game for some reason. Um, don't know what's going on with that. Even with, like, you know, a dynamic resolution target, it would just panic. Uh, and then ultimately, at the end of the day, you're leveling up these characters and doing these meaningless side quests. 
that don't really add much, and then what do you get at the end? You get told, hey, you're max level, go do the raids, except you need four players to do it. And then I'm like, but the raids are the same bosses, or the same thing. Actually, there's two missions. There are two missions that you do once you are hit max level, because they give you some slightly above max level gear. And both of those require four players, and both of those recycle a lot of game content. I was like, I'm I'm so done with this, because what's the point? What was the actual, like, purpose of all of this? It's just an exercise of uh, persistence, basically. I didn't really enjoy the combat that much. Um, you know, presentation-wise, okay, sure, but tacking on this, like, you know, looter mechanic and all this stuff, it's like, none of it... One, none of it ever really mattered, because the game was constantly at this fixed difficulty. It never really got any harder. Uh, even if you kept challenging yourself to, like, harder difficulty levels by setting the difficulty up, you know, it just meant the enemies took more damage. And ultimately, you didn't even get better loot. The loot is fixed. The loot is relative to you. So if you're lower level, you just get slightly better level loot compared to you. What is the point of playing anything on a harder difficulty? I just waste my time, so... Um, yeah. Ultimately, not really any worthwhile point in playing that game. So, that's my opinion of the Avengers. I'm probably going to be done with it very, very soon. And then, uh, I don't know, I'm going to try and play the new Zelda. Something like that, so. Uh, I forgot if I saved. I probably did. Anyway, that was my ramble. That was my rant. I'm sitting here talking about the Avengers game, but that's because I really wanted to get it... <laughs> get the Avengers game ran out, so. Anyway, if you enjoyed all this whole stream, because it's been a bit chaotic, uh, still, still working through stuff. I got two gym badges. I, I feel pretty good about that, so. Uh, with that, I would like to thank you so very, very much for watching. If you enjoyed the stream, or you, uh, missed parts at the first hour, because my internet cut out, like, six times, uh, you can follow on YouTube, uh, or subscribe on YouTube, where the VOD will be up very shortly, within 24 hours, and you can probably see all of that with, a uh, with, a uh, you know, <laughs> Without the, the, the hiccups. Um, if you want to watch more stuff live, you can follow here. Thank you very much, Blub, for the for the thanks. Thanks for the thanks. There you go. Um, but yeah, you can follow here. Um, I'm on Fediverse as well. Uh, I've got links in places. I don't really say too much, though. Um, but yeah, other than that, like, you know, I appreciate you spending the time watching the stream. And uh, if you miss bits of it or whatever, you can just watch back and all stuff. But that's all good. That's all... All the good stuff, so, anyway, stay safe, don't stay up to wait like I have, because I get very tired around 11.40, apparently. Um, so, have a good one, everyone, and, uh, catch you- Oh, snap, it's the end of the month, isn't it? I don't have a theme for June. It's June-June. June bug, if you will. <laughs> Alright, have a good one, everyone. Woo!